we're about to get ready to do something that's never been done before in the history of DXC. So I'm going to be live streaming today. Please keep watching. And when we ask you to take action, please do. We're getting ready to go. Tree, I'm going to be in front of you. That's fine. We need Cassie here. She knows where we're going. And I do too, actually. We're turning the corner. I know where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. She should be up here. and everyone behind me to um, witness what we're about to witness. Folks, we're getting ready to, if you're just joining us now, we're getting ready to go do something that has never been done before in the history of DXC. So please stay tuned, keep watching this live stream, share this live stream, and when we ask you to take action, please do, because we need the world to see what's going on right now. Smelling the slaughterhouse right now. You can see the sign. It smells like death and feces and blood. I'm gonna have to start recording. Paul, you ready? Yes. But you need to slow down a little. You need to slow down a little. We got birds crying and coughing. So uh, we're here in, uh, in front of a sheep and goat pen. Do uh, you want to go in a bit? And I'm going to go in. So the team can go in right now. Priya. Priya is the gate. Okay. There's a woman who can speak to you in the other room. How about you? You can speak to the How woman in the other room. This is a private property. Private business. You're not supposed to come there without the permission. You see these animals are covered in feces. And this land has feces all over it. Okay. 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 Okay.
Services. If you're listening to this, please, if you're watching, please call Oakland Animal Services. Ask them to come and take all of these animals to their shelter, give them the veterinary care that they deserve, and then place them in loving homes, just like they would a case of abuse of a dog or cat. These animals are no different. Please call Oakland Animal Services so that they come and take all of these animals to a safe place, treat them, and then adopt them out to loving homes. We're gonna we're gonna try to do what we can right now to help them. We just rescued a little. Uh, <clears throat> we just rescued someone from inside this facility, and um, we're <clears throat> this lamb is going to be taken to a place where she's no longer going to be killed. As Elmira was saying, she was going to become someone's dinner, but not today. And it's amazing how these animals feel that you're not going to hurt them. Directly when we started holding her, she was okay, and she was the smallest one. She was cowering in the corner. What Open can everyone on the live stream do? Please, please, please call Animal Services. Oakland Animal Services, the number, the number is in the description. The number is in the description. Folks, there are remember, over no 200 animal. activists bearing witness inside of this slaughterhouse right now. 200 activists. We are here with love. We do not hate the workers. We do not hate the people who are shopping here, but we hate the system that allows this violence to continue. So please call Oakland Animal Services. Tell them to come, take these animals to a shelter, give them the veterinary care they need, and adopt them to loving homes, just like they would if these were dogs and cats right here. These animals need your help. We're gonna go back here. This is your shelter. Some, you, got some, you got some live animals that might really here. I'm here waiting. Inside this barrel where they're, they're set to be killed. So these, right now these activists are blocking animals who are in this barrel where they're going to be killed. These animals are suffering. This is what they do. They throw them in the garbage. Right here, we're going to go onto the kill floor. This is where animals are being killed. You can see right here, animals are being abused. We're going to see these Wait for me. Folks, can you give room for Almira? And then also, can we make sure uh, Layton... These activists are non-violently non -violently stopping the process of slaughter here. There is blood, feces, feathers on the floor. It smells disgusting in here. I know you don't want to hurt these animals. Please don't hurt them. Today we're not going to let you hurt these animals. You can try to talk to somebody else. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. We're asking that you surrender these animals to us. We just want to give them a good home, and today we're not going to let you kill them. We're not. We're not going to let you kill any of these animals. 
Let's go over here, guys. We are here with people from these communities who are just saying that this is not our way of life. This is not our tradition. We are not here with hatred for anyone. We are asking people for love. We love everyone here, and we want everyone, including non-human animals, to be loved and respected. And right here, we see the bloody, violent truth of the animal here. There's dead bodies on the floor. There's blood. It's filthy in here. It smells open disgusting. It I mean, this is where they kill the animals. I've seen footage. Just open it up for now. We'll see these quails. See these quail, and they're about to be. They're in a garbage can. Yeah. There's one. Tough. There's a few that are really sick. You can see they don't have feathers. They're not able to see. Barely breathe. So what happens is um, can the you workers, show people the bloody ones too? The workers take these animals. They put them in the garbage can and then they wait in that garbage can until it's until they are killed. But right here we have activists walking the slaughterhouse line. They are not letting any animals be killed today. I mean, you want to show people these are the cones they throw them in after they slit their throats to let them bleed out. Slaughter is an inherently violent process. This is what happens to animals. We eat, who some people eat, they, they die violent deaths, even in smaller slaughterhouses like this. The only thing we can do is speak up for animals and take action, and right now you can take action. You can take action by calling Oakland Animal Services, telling them that you are witnessing animal cruelty right now, and you want them to come and take these animals and take them to a shelter where they receive veterinary care and will be adopted out to good homes, just like a dog or cat would be. So there's body parts all over here. There's um, some, someone's foot. Someone's foot. And all these animals were, were killed here, and there's also someone's bloody head. So um, there's a very disturbing sight, folks. <laughs> um, all of us are in tears. All of us here are in tears. It's very shocking and extremely disturbing, and we're asking the people, the owners here, to please surrender the animals to us, and you can help us by making that call. And for those of you who are just joining us now, we have already rescued animals from this facility. Someone is alive because of the activists today. We are going to continue doing that. We have people here from the communities who are working and operating the slaughterhouse saying this is not what we want to do. This is not what we're going to say. Do you have any words, yeah. Samer? I grew up uh, in a Muslim family. All I have to say is, like, this is not halal. This is haram. Like, animals, like, aren't here for us to kill and abuse. And, like, it's obvious, like, from the conditions here that, like, anyone would say that this is not okay. Uh, I mean, do you want to share any thoughts? Yeah. We know now that it is completely unnecessary to eat animals. So, since it's not halal, to eat these animals, it is haram. And inshallah, maybe these animals will finally be free one day. So this is the thing that spins and spins, and sometimes even live animals are thrown with this, and they're spun and their feathers are all taken off, and they should be collected somewhere. And they throw them in these garbage cans, which is why I wouldn't just see the like, amount of film. This, disgusting. This place is hot, it's stinky, it's bloody. This is a this bucket is a blood of blood. That collects a from the sunset. Bucket of blood. blood. Wait, you might want to shoot the fire. 
Maybe it's not here. You might want to shoot this just this bucket of blood too. And a giant bucket full of feathers. No matter the slaughterhouse, no matter the process, no matter the size, slaughter is always violent. There is nothing ethical, humane about slaughter. It is a violent, bloody process. And here you can see- This is actually the centrifuge alarm. So I, I want everyone to see exactly what this is. Because they throw these animals in and they have all these tentacles that basically bash the animals and take all their feathers and fur off. And you can see all the feathers have been collected here. And they do this to all sorts of animals. And we are literally standing um, in feathers, water, blood, feces. Oh, I, mean, I don't know if you got a chance to yeah. see this bucket full Yeah, of this is a bucket full of organs treated just like garbage. There's someone's coffee cup in here along with someone else's body. So we want to show you there's some live animals in the trash can here. Um, let's show, let's show where there's some live animals. Right the now the process yeah, back yeah, here yeah. has stopped. And that's what we're here to do today, to stop the slaughter, to rescue animals to say yeah. that all of these animals need to be taken to a shelter, rehabilitated, given care, and adopted into loving homes. So if you're watching this, there's 1.2 thousand people watching this right now on live stream. Make the call, tell Oakland Animal Services, that this is animal cruelty, these animals need to be seized, they need to be taken to a shelter, they need to be given veterinary care, they need to be adopted into loving homes, just like if they were dogs and cats. Are you still the public? Yes. Yeah. Is that well in the front line? I'm going to um, show you guys what these uh, news. We have a journalist here with us, too. So we have a journalist right now who is also documenting the conditions. And it is important that we have mainstream media covering this issue to show the public that animal cruelty is violent. It's inherently violent, it's disgusting. This is a horrible place, and we need all of these animals to be taken to shelter. Please make the call. Can we get Paul over? Oh, actually, Can I ask you to step out? are stopping um, any more animals from being slaughtered. Show people the ends that have escaped. These animals right here, they've escaped. Um, they they don't want to die. These, we just saw in, I think, New York City, bulls who run for their lives escape slaughterhouse trucks. These animals will do everything they can to, to escape slaughter because they want to live just like we do. Here are the activists. 200 activists inside of the slaughterhouse with love in our hearts. We are not Oops. here to target anyone. No red flowers yet. We are not here to Oops. target anybody. We no are here to yet. speak up for the animals, really to show all really the bad. animals love and really care bad. and compassion. Okay. Okay. Do you want us to remove the ones that are already yeah, here? Let's... Okay, Priya. Uh, let's, wait, wait. Can we get Paul over here? So, in order for us to save all of these animals, we need you to make the call. Paul, make the call to open animal services. We're gonna remove one of the animals from the garbage can. Make the call. Ask them yeah. to save all of these animals. Decisions? We will save as many point. as we can, but you need to help us to save all of them. There are hundreds. Take the one with the, no feathers. Okay. Priya is currently um, rescuing an animal, literally Someone from the bucket that on. where they were going to be killed. She's tiny, room? she's Marlene, scared, but her room? life is not less important than any of ours. Priya's gonna take her to safety. Give me some room, Priya. Folks, careful, careful. Folks, careful. Out of the way. We have an animal who's in the garbage can. She's scared. It's okay. You're okay now. You're okay now. Great, slow down, slow down a bit. Folks, get out of the way, please. We have an animal who's in the garbage can. We're taking her out. She doesn't have any feathers. You're fine, you have plenty of room. There's no one behind you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, let's give her a Tara Okay, Tara, 
be really careful because she's really small and weak and also she's definitely moving around so I actually I feel comfortable if I could Go ahead, yeah. take her all the way. So Priya's going to take her to safety. Okay, Paul, do you want to follow them? Yes. So if you are just joining us right now, we have two hun over 200 activists. Back up. Everybody back up. Where are you going with that? That the garbage can. What's that? She was in the garbage can. We have video footage. Yes. All right. Well, until we figure out what's going on, you're not allowed to leave the scene with it. Okay, that's, that's criminal animal cruelty. That's real listen, animal. listen to what I just said. Sure, we're listening. Until we figure out what's going on, nobody's okay. leaving the scene with it. So we're asking you to enforce the law, protect the animals, and give us a little space. I understand that, but okay. until we can all figure out what's going on, there's how many of you and how many of us right now. Okay. Do you understand that? So we are asking you guys to respect this right now. You are not allowed to remove an animal. And she if needs you immediate do, medical care. you will be getting arrested. Okay, we have to get a medical care right now. This is an emergency situation. So you heard you the doctrine of legal necessity? If there's a dog who's hurt, we have a right to take until, her to the vet. Listen, until my sergeant gets here, nobody's leaving with any property. Okay. That's it. End of well, story. We have to take her to the vet. So. You're not taking her. Well, you, I mean, what I just said. You can, you can arrest us, sir. No, absolutely. Sure. So can you call an emergency vet for us? You can call an emergency vet okay. if you'd like the vet to come down here. That is you need to back up. We, we have to back up. Everybody in arm length, back up now. Yeah. We have so to take we're here care. and the police are. I'm sorry, now you're trying to do your job. Right. Right. We're just going to have to take this. She was saying, in the garbage. Can. 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 They can show you the video. Okay. I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you guys are wrong for being here. What I'm saying is until we get a sergeant here and we figure out what's going on, nobody's removing anybody's property from this. Okay, this is not property. This is a living creature that's not in the garbage. Okay. This is criminal animal cruelty. Okay, until the sergeant comes. Nobody's okay, but we need to take her to the vet. I'm sorry. I'm telling you right now, you're not going with that animal. Yeah, well, you can you can arrest her. You can arrest me if you'd like to. And, I mean, we feel like we have a right to take someone who's you from the feel like that, I'm telling you, well, you don't. Well, I'm a lawyer, and I think just you do. Minutes. You don't, right? There's a doctrine called legal necessity. Okay, when the sergeant says we have a right to take her. Okay. All right? Okay. Um, Priya, I think we should just take her. Yeah, we have to take her, so you're I'm sorry. Not she, look, she has, she's dying right now. You're gonna let this poor bird die? I'm not a vet, I don't know that. She has no feathers, she was in a garbage can. Do you want me to show you the video footage? Until we have to take her, she's gonna die. Until the hey, back up. Back up. Sir, this is just criminal. Please. Just come back to the back. Yeah, we should just come back. You're not leaving. You're not leaving. Sir, we'll, we'll come right back to you right after, but we have to take her. Is that okay? Nobody's leaving. Excuse me, officer. Excuse me. I'm the witness. I was standing inside the other harassing. Sir, he was in the garbage can. She was in the garbage can. Sir, we were witnessing that there's so much. Harassing. They were shoving. She was in the garbage can. Then in other garbage can. Sir. She's a piece of garbage. Everybody calm down. Um, we're going to try, try to help you guys figure this out, okay? Yeah. Okay. So, you have a line of direct action everywhere they have rescued this yeah. bird that they said they We're bound by a couple of laws, right? Sure. So, we have to give them the opportunity to remedy any wrongdoing that you may see them doing. Okay. So, in this instance, I understand it's going to be painful. I'm going to ask you to give the bird back to them. No, we can't and do that. This bird's about to die. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah, I'm going to stop. She, you can see her eyes. Look at her eyes. So she's barely even able to see the condition yeah. of the bird. I understand. She doesn't even have that weight on her. She's going to be killed. Whether she's killed or not, if that's legal by their business and the purview of their thing, we can't just break into their business. I need you to back up a little bit, please. Thank you. But she was, I understand but she was in the garden. Believe yeah. me, I sympathize yeah. with you. Yeah. I may even agree with you at an off-duty time when we had a bar together. Sure. But yeah. and now we're yeah. bound by laws and the ability to go into somebody else's place sure. of business and take things out of there yeah. against their will and against the law subjects you to criminal and civil <laughs> prosecution. Not if it's right? a, so. an animal being abused. And I've removed many animals from yeah. abusive yeah. situations. And if it's an immediate need and okay. the animal needs medical care. We've seen like very reasonable yeah. people and nice caring people. And I respect you and I respect what you're trying to accomplish here. There are better, more above board, not ambushing a business sure. on a Sunday afternoon type of ways to do this. We called Oakland Animal Services, so this is not an ambush. Okay. I mean, Oakland Animal Services has to take an action. And animals like this are being thrown in garbage cans when they're sick. They, they sit there for sometimes days or weeks of no food or water, and they die of starvation. Or they're eaten alive by other birds in the garbage can. Okay. So, so uh, animals should not be eating each other alive. And this is a danger to my community. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Do you live here? I do. I live, I live in Berkeley. Okay. Okay. The local community, so, the Chinatown community, is being threatened by the slaughterhouse because they're feeding them. Two, two feet back, please. Back. Two feet back. Give us a little room, okay, guys? That's all we're asking. You guys are way too close to us. Thank you. We are coming into very much after the fact in the moment, right? Yeah. I am willing to assist with an investigation into this slaughterhouse and to do what we can from our level on a criminal prosecution stand. For sure. However. At this point, I have to maintain that you cannot go against a business's property inside okay. and remove things from there yeah. without some form of legal justification, which yeah. I do not have at this moment. Yeah. So you may lose a battle today, 
Yeah. But she will not necessarily use her core in the long term. Oh, she's okay. she's okay. about okay. I see that you're in pain. I understand. Both of you need to if there's something that maybe we can work out in a one-on-one. You can go to the this car. We had okay. and respectful okay. enough to let you guys see this. We're allowed to come across. And we're allowed to make push you back for after safety reasons. We need all the animals to go back in the bushes, and from there we can begin a dialogue. Right? That's what we're talking. Yeah, I don't think we have time. We, 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 we just can't let it die. Yeah. We've agreed. We're just, we're gonna leave now. Okay, I think, I think Priya's willing to be arrested if she has to. If you want to arrest someone for taking an animal out of the garbage, I mean, that's your prerogative. I'm not gonna arrest anyone. Okay, but no, I mean, we're fine with that. But we have to take it to the vet right now, because there's not, there's not an issue. Okay, so talk to you. the owner? No, no, I'm not the owner. The owner. Yeah. I was scared. I was scared all with my wife over there. All people just came. No permission, no courtesy, no ass. Hey, where's the owner? Where's the owner? Where's the owner? Where's the owner? If you want to go to somebody's property, ask the permission, there's a way. You must have a courtesy. If you want to use the influence yourself, I'm so and so. I think you should ask the owner. No, I, I, I don't let her do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is, I, I want the proof first she can find it in the trash can. You got proof for me? Yeah, not, not, not a serious reason. That's a serious reason. Where did you find the animal? She was in the trash can. And she is featherless. She's not doing the best. So you want to take it to the vet. That's all to the vet. And they're saying that that animal's property and they won't rescue it. Okay, this is direct action everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, and the police are here. They're going to have to you. Must have a permission. You must have. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. And they are covering this. No, no. Why you came over? Why you harassing us? What? You don't have a right. You guys have to. 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 This is not your property. That's not to the law. This is not your property. You belong to somebody else. These animals. There's another. You guys have to. That's not to the law. What the no, 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 but you don't consider these animals property. Okay. Yeah. These I'm animals here. are not property. Everybody out. She has animals a breathing heart that's, 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 that's breathing that's right next to you. Sir. No, sir, I mean, I are you know contending that it's illegal to, to do this to an animal and therefore you are basically trying to rescue an animal on the animal cruelty laws that you feel that you've got the jurisdiction to do that, you've got the right to do that. She was in conditions which violates her rules and animal cruelty law. And all we're here to do is something which is legal. Take her to the vet. Take her to the vet. So we'll look at the police listen to your arguments. Take her to the vet. 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 Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. So, no more animals police, leave, though. Okay. Let the us police the right way, okay? yeah. gave the take money. The animal, take, take her to a car. Uh. And, and the police gave the money to the, um, the police. We're not going to leave. We're still here. We're going to go to the garbage yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. else is going back inside. Okay. We're going to follow you. Unless you work here, you wow. should not go inside the business at the uh, moment. Sir, I'm just going to Okay, sure where's the car? Okay. okay, that's fine. We need another This is extraordinary. We need any, any other car. Um, okay, the crate. I agree. So where's the next car? Like yeah, we need. We need. Uh, you know, they have a tough job too. Everybody, animal agriculture puts everybody. We in a are tough taking position. this little sweetheart, this little angel, to the vet. So and stay here. I'm gonna go find the, the moment car. when police told me that I could not. Okay, stay. Please call Oakland Animal Services. Please call them right now. Tell them that animal cruelty is happening and that they need to take all these animals, take them to safety.
So we're not here with hatred in our hearts. We don't hate the workers. We don't hate the people who are shopping here. We just want love for everyone, love for all animals. There's 1,000 people watching this live stream right now. So if 1,000 people can call Oakland Animal Services right now, tell them that you are witnessing animal cruelty, tell them that they need to come take these animals to the vet, give them the veterinary care they need, and then adopt them into loving homes just like they would a dog or a cat. Animals are not property. We know that they are not property. They're living, breathing beings. So if you please can make that call to Oakland Animal Services, share this video, ask others to do the same. We're just here with love and compassion. We have no hatred for anyone here. Not the workers, not the police, not the people shopping. We just want to show these animals love and compassion. So right now, the police are not letting anyone else come in to the facility. We still have about 100 activists, I think, inside. We have red roses for the animals. We're going to tie them on these cages to show them that we love them and that we believe that their lives are important also. So uh, there are some activists on the inside and there are some activists on the outside. I'm going to introduce you, sir. Would you like to go through? Nope. Nope. Everybody needs to be. So they're not letting uh, media inside um, so, either. Uh, and anybody who's on the please call Oakland outside. Animal Services. Call them, tell them that you're witnessing animal cruelty um, and that they need to take these animals and take them and give them veterinary care like they would any other animal. Veterinary care and adopting them into a loving home. We are going to assist with the adoption. We are willing to help adopt all of these animals out because they all deserve to live and they're on death's door in the slaughterhouse right now. And if we all make that call, maybe we can save their lives. We've already saved at least two animals. They're being taken away to safety, to vet care, to live in a sanctuary, but we wanna save all of them. So please make that call. So there's over 200 activists here, 200 activists, some inside, some outside, people who are willing to get arrested um, so that we can save the lives of these animals. Right now, I'm not allowed back inside. No, no one is allowed back inside or they are going to be arrested, including the news, who's here. And again, for people who are just joining us, we entered this slaughterhouse with love and compassion in our hearts. We do not hate the workers. We do not hate the people who come here. Um, we do not hate the police. We have love for everyone, and everyone includes non-human animals. And so we have rescued animals from here. We have activists inside who are willing to go to jail. And um, what we want you to do is call Oakland Animal Services. Call Oakland Animal Services, tell them that you saw animal cruelty. You can see it on this video. There's animals dying in garbage cans. The floor is covered in blood and feces. Tell them that they need to come and seize all of these animals because what's happening right here is illegal. So please make the call, keep following this, share this live stream. And um, yeah, I just want to say once again for people who are joining, um, right now the police are not letting anyone inside the building, including uh, the news who is here. So we're just going to be waiting outside. Um, we're in Oakland at a slaughterhouse. We have no hate for anybody. We only have love for the animals. No hate for the workers. No hate for the customers. We don't, we don't want them to lose their jobs. We just want them to do something that doesn't cause so much harm and violence in their lives. People are wondering what number the, what the number is. There are over 200 activists here with us today. Over 200. What's the number to call? It is in the Direct Action Everywhere live stream description. I don't know it off the top of my head, but if you go to Direct Action Everywhere, we're live streaming also. And the number. Facebook Direct Action Everywhere yes. will have the live stream. It's live stream. The number is in the description. Oakland Animal Services. Yeah. Oakland Animal Services is the number to call. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's gone. She took the uh, bird to the vet. So, 
So you're not letting anyone else just nope. to film? As press, I can't go in. I'm no. covering the story. I talk to, I, listen, I talk, this is private property, listen to what I'm saying. This is private property, they're asking everybody to disperse, okay? That's a legal thing, okay? This is trespassing if we let anybody else in, all right? But we're media covering the story. Media does not count on private property, ma'am. So some people may not know that this business is also trying to open a slaughterhouse in San Francisco. We don't want another slaughterhouse in the Bay Area. We do not want this business operating a slaughterhouse in San Francisco. So together we can hopefully shut this place down and shut down any more expansions they have planned. You can hear the animals. Over 200 activists are here. Please make the call if you haven't already, Oakland Animal Services. Share this video and ask other people to make the call also. Some activists are willing to stay here and get arrested and unless all the other animals are being taken out right now. Another animal being taken out. Another animal. We have a bunny right now. Third, third most common household companion animal. And people eat them, they test on them, they wear their fur. These animals are not property. We're gonna take her to safety. We're taking this animal to safety. She's not going to be killed today. We're taking her to safety. It does not matter if we get arrested. She's going to go to a safe place. She's going to get veterinary care. She's going to um, go to a loving home. And uh, today is not the day that she dies. So please make the call. Let's save all of these animals. Lots of police here and activists who are willing to get arrested. Um, they are willing to get arrested if that's what it takes to save all of these animals. So I think um, most of the activists are now coming outside. Um, there's going to be some people who stay. I'm going to try to see if we can get to the front so we can see what's going on. We have over 200 activists here right now. They came from all over the country just to, to take part in this action um, because people all over are rising up and saying that animals are not property and we will do whatever it takes to save their lives. When the, law, when the law is unjust, we have a moral obligation to break those unjust laws. That's how things change. Unjust laws. Everybody, just come back a little bit, please. Thank you. Please, please, if you have not already called Oakland Animal Services, 
make the call. Make the call, ask them, save all of these animals. This is the only way we can save all of these animals if, if the people step in and, and help out. We have saved lives today, but we want to save all of them. Like, that's all. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. So right now there's almost a thousand people on live stream watching this. On just one live stream, multiple are going. Everyone here made the call. We could we could really show Oakland Animal Services that all animals, not just dogs and cats, deserve being rescued, cared for, adopted. And right here you can see all of these people. All of these people who are holding up their flowers and saying that animals are not property. They are not property, but we are gonna change the world. And we're not here because we don't like the workers. We're not here because we want to make the police have a hard day. We're here because we love the animals. And this is what it takes to save their lives. Because right now they are considered property. The police have to protect people's property. But we think it's wrong that animals are property. Right now you can see Wayne, he's speaking to the police. We are asking the owners of this uh, slaughterhouse to relinquish all of the animals to Oakland Animal Services. So and that is part of the argument that he's We have right Jane now. Jane Blaise Mitchell also live streaming right now and for those of you who are just joining us please share this video and right now what we have what we're at is uh, Saba Live Poultry in Oakland, California, a slaughterhouse that kills hundreds thousands of animals every day, rabbits, goats, lambs, chickens, quail and we I've seen footage from inside of this facility um, animals are not only being killed they're also being tortured um, until the day that they're they are killed and I've seen the slaughter it's very violent like ever, any slaughter is so what we're what we're doing here is we're rescuing animals um, at this point the police have stopped us from going inside the facility but there are activists inside who are willing to get arrested they're they're in there and um, right now I can't go inside anymore so I'm trying to film as much as I can from out here don't take any pictures of mine without my permission, please, morally. I don't allow it. We have all these people, all these people bearing witness here. Um, and as you see, the flowers, the peace signs, like, we don't have hate for the workers here. We don't have hate for the people who run this business, who come here to shop at this business. We just want this business to stop hurting animals. Sanjeev, if you were inside, do you have anything you want to say to the people things. on live stream? I saw horrible things. I saw half dead animals. Mm -hmm. I saw them split apart, you know, just torn apart. That was so horrible. Yeah. That was so horrible. And, and you helped save someone? Yes, yes. Yeah. That's the one great thing I did today. Yeah. Is that I managed to rescue a little baby. I'm sure I'll spend a lot of time with her. Or yeah. Him. yeah. Part of one of the rescues. Yes, I was. Can you say, uh, Sanjeev, what uh, what went on? So Priya, do you see what's going on? You want to give us a little recap of what just happened? Yeah, we are basically, Wayne is um, being followed by police officers and showing instance after instance of the horrific conditions these animals live in. Hey, Paul? Paul's right there. Paul? Yes. Can you make sure you're near the front? Yes, with the camera if we need to. Just to document anything that happens. Wait. Just get, get Paul in the front. Okay. Folks, can you get out of the way for Paul a little bit? Wait. Yeah. Yeah. No, don't. I don't I want to start. I mean, the officer. Is it okay if she comes in? Nope. No? 
So a lot of people might say like, oh, this is so violent because this is halal. Yeah. Do you want to talk about how this is Absolutely. everywhere? On, not only is it just everywhere, but this is just, uh, you know, this instance of what's happening inside of this halal slaughterhouse, honestly, is better than what's happening across industrial slaughterhouses across the world. And when we walked inside, we were surrounded by bloodshed, by quivering animals. They were shaking. They're, you know, some of them were defecating because they're so scared. Every interaction they've had with a human is horrible. And that is the best case scenario. This place is the best case scenario. Um, so, you know, this is not about uh, halal or not halal. This is about violence towards animals. And it's happening everywhere. Um, and we're asking everyone, you know, on live stream over here, and even, even the police officers who, to, 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 to bear witness to the atrocities that are happening. And um, if you look at these animals, you don't want to hurt them. I don't think anybody wants to hurt these animals. We're asking public officials of, of Oakland, of Berkeley, take a stand. Wayne! Hey guys, could you scoot Wayne. back? Wayne! Wayne! Hold on, the big gate. So I'm trying to close the door. I'm going to try to close the door. Can you everybody back up, okay? Wait, you're gonna, you're gonna close the door and Wayne back there? What's going to happen to Wayne back there? Are you trying to do the cameras from what I'm doing here? So the facility has closed the doors. There are over two dozen activists inside. They're willing to um, get arrested if that's what it takes. Uh, the police are inside, um, and they are the activists are showing the police what is happening to animals inside of this facility. Um, there are probably about 160, 180 activists left outside, bearing witness. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna sing um, for the animals who hopefully we we still have a chance of saving. So if you haven't made the call yet. Please make the call to Oakland Animal Services. Call Oakland Animal Services. We're asking public officials in Oakland and Berkeley to please take a stance. Help activists. There's hundreds of people here. Help them do the right thing. Help them get these animals to shelters. They don't belong here. And we all know, whether it's public officials or anyone else, you don't want to support the slaughter of these animals. You don't want to hurt these animals. None of us want to hurt animals any more than we would our dogs and cats. And we all know that, that's, that's, that dogs and cats at home, we love them. And we love these animals the same. So please, um, you know, ask, we're asking all public officials the, um, to, to, take a, to take action. Are they beings who deserve to be protected from uh, illness and being kept in a cage where they can't even stand up, which we saw. And we saw animals being pecked by other animals, animals who were bloodied. We saw that on videotape. So the question is, is there no protection for them? There's nothing that can be done. They are mere property. And if you take them away, then you're wrong, not the person who allowed or the institution that allowed um, this animal to suffer? Is that what, what society has become? You know, women used to be property, um, and that changed. And animals right now are property, non-human animals are property, and we're here to challenge that. And we feel like there are laws that are unjust, and we're here to defy those laws, and there are activists inside who are doing that. And right now, we're gonna, we're gonna sing.
Wayne just got arrested. We're expecting other activists to come out soon. everyone to call Oakland Animal Services, ask them to please take action. Animal cruelty is going on, but he's willing to risk his freedom to speak up for these animals. For those of you who are just joining us right now, we just went into a slaughterhouse with 200 activists and we documented the animal cruelty that was going on and we rescued as many animals as we can. At this point, the police have come, they have closed the doors, there's about two dozen activists inside who are willing to risk arrest and the rest of us are outside singing for these animals and asking you to call Oakland Animal Services call them, ask them to come and investigate and see the cruelty that's happening here. Take these animals to their shelter, give them veterinary care, and adopt them to loving homes like they would a dog or cat. Because animals are not property. And right now the law says they're property, but when there is an unjust law, we have the moral obligation to break and disobey that unjust law.
Wayne um, inside the police car. He's got a big smile on his face because he's willing to do what it takes. No one should be that happy. But he is happy because we saved lives today. We saved um, at least three animals that I know of and maybe more. And we want to save all of the animals inside the slaughterhouse. has been arrested. He is the head of direct action. sacrifices and saying hey like you know we're we 
we, we're asking you to surrender these animals and um, help us take them to shelters. Help them, help us take them, take them to the vet, not have their throats slit. So, like they would if this were dogs. Absolutely. If, if this were dogs, right? Yeah. And as we saw today, I don't. Miriam, you were uh, speaking um, to the workers. Did you want to share us a little bit about what was going on there? I was asking them to look into the animal's eyes and to see the pain and fear in their eyes and to let them go. They asked me to buy them and take them that way and I said there's no way that you would buy an individual and um, if you wouldn't buy a human, you wouldn't buy a non-human. They're sentient beings just like us. Yeah. And um, I know some people are saying, oh this is what happens when it's like a halal slaughterhouse, but you want to talk a little bit about all, how all slaughterhouses are violent? Because they ultimately the animals are getting killed. I'm an Iranian American. Um, I come from a culture, um, that kind of background, and I understand. And so that's, there's no tradition, culture is no excuse for animal abuse. It doesn't matter um, what culture the slaughterhouse is from, it is wrong. Killing animals, exploitation, torture, uh, starvation, is wrong no matter who's doing it and do you think the workers like want to work here like what was your impression talking to them they they when i asked the workers and um, even the manager i asked i know you have compassion for the animals i know you care he said yes i care but i can't do anything about it right now so yeah. we need to show them that they do have a solution they can let go of these animals and mm -hmm. and i told them that they have our support if they do that they have our complete support absolutely we'll, yeah, yeah we'll do whatever we can to make it work for them yeah. and I, I and I also let them know that we mean no harm we have compassion and love for them and for the animals and for everyone who works in there absolutely thanks so much Miriam sure we have quite a few uh, police vehicles here I think um, waiting to take uh, the activists out and on their way like Miriam said we are not here to say that the workers are wrong or to say that the customers are horrible people. We have all done things in our past that hurt others and we have now decided that you know hurting animals is not the way to go. Hurting animals is violence just like it is when we hurt humans. And so we are here saying that it's not right that animals are property. We have to challenge these unjust laws that say that animals are property and the only way we're gonna challenge and change those laws is by sometimes committing acts of civil disobedience, always nonviolently, never with hate in our hearts, but sometimes we do need to uh, put our bodies on the line, our freedom on the line, um, to, to get things to really change in this country and in the world. So the activists are now going to do a memorial for the animals. This is my flower and I'm here because I know deep down in every human heart there is compassion. Our job as a citizen and humans, we need to speak up for injustice. Not only against humans, but against not humans. They are our friends and we need to stop killing them just to satisfy our taste. So please, please keep speaking up. You don't have to say anything, yeah, you can just put a flower down it. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Thank you. I'm here because I want to stop the cruelty against all animals, all living beings, and I saw them in horrible conditions inside. I saw them. So we have hundreds, hundreds of activists right here um, who are going to lay their flowers down to remember all of the animals who, who have died here in the past and hopefully no more animals will die here in the future. And this place will be shut down. Every slaughterhouse will be shut down. Um, and, and the activists who um, took a stand for that will be remembered.
here because until there is a trait that is present in um, animals that is present in humans would allow us to treat humans and animals in the same way, I see no reason why humans and animals do not deserve the same right to life. So for those of you who are just joining us, um, we just executed a mass open rescue inside of a slaughterhouse and there are currently two dozen activists who are still inside um, doing civil disobedience, willing to get arrested if that's what it takes. Our ask is for this slaughterhouse and the city of Oakland to take all of the animals out of the slaughterhouse, bring them to a vet and a shelter and help us adopt them out to loving homes. There are hundreds of animals in there. We rescued who we could before the police came and shut the doors. And um, right now we are outside. We are doing a memorial for the animals. Um, if, you, if you are watching this on live stream, there have been thousands of people watching this, what you can do is share the video and make the call to Oakland Animal Services, show, um, at, telling them that you saw animal cruelty on the video, that you think it's wrong to hurt animals, that animals are not property, and that they should come and um, take the animals to their shelter like they would if these animals were dogs and cats. of flowers inside the slaughterhouse on the cages. I'm here today because I love animals and when you love someone you don't hurt them or exploit them. Zoe, do you want to share a little bit about what you saw inside of the slaughterhouse? Yeah, so myself and a couple other activists uh, were on the kill floor, so we uh, walked to the back right away and we uh, linked arms to block the killing equipment. And we found a bucket full of um, live quail, and next to the bucket full of live quail was a bucket full of uh, dead quail who had already been slaughtered. Uh, and you know there was blood and, and the cones where they um, slit the chickens throats and stick them into the cones to bleed out. Uh, there were feathers uh, everywhere on the floor uh, and feces and there were severed heads and wings that had been torn off of uh, birds. 
Um, but we actually did save one of the quail, as you guys saw earlier, um, who was in that trash bin. Um, and she's, she's heading to sanctuary right now, which is incredible. And we can all hold on to that and ha get hope. And someday we'll be able to free all of the animals in places like this one. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so some people might say, like, oh, I'm too old or I'm too young or I'm too shy to make a difference. And what would you say to those people who are watching on live stream? We've had over 2,000 people on the live stream today. Well, I'm 15 years old and I, you know, I've been doing animal rights activism since I was 11 years old. And it's not like, and I'm not any better than anybody else. Anybody has the power to do whatever. There's no excuses. Um, and we just all need to understand the sense of urgency and think about the animals and realize that they deserve to live just as much as us. And once we truly, truly think about the animals, we can escape that feeling of fear that we have within ourselves. And we can just have the courage to do what they need us to do, um, which is liberate them from places like this one. Absolutely. So um, still hundreds of activists here, about two dozen still inside the slaughterhouse who has shut their door. They are not open for the day anymore. Um, and we're, we're waiting to see um, if they are going to be arrested or when they're going to come out or what's going on inside. <laughs> came here and saved a few lives. Yeah. It really feels good, but what is inside it really makes it really, really bad. And it's happening everywhere in the world, not just here, but everywhere. Yes. Everybody should wake up and do something about it. Yeah. Don't just be vegan. Do more than just being vegan. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Alex said, you know, don't just be vegan, do something more. Um, don't be the quiet vegan who's afraid to speak up. Speaking up can be really hard, but it is so much easier when you have a community of people behind you. And so I encourage everyone who's watching the live stream to find that community. Um, it could be Direct Action Everywhere, it could be the SAVE movement, Anonymous for the Voiceless. There are activist groups all over the place who are taking direct action for animals find that group find the community and start taking action if you're nervous about it just first go to an event and watch you know all of us were nervous when we started and then when you find the people who are going to support you to do that it just becomes so much easier and there's a really really important study that was done by Erica Chenoweth that says that every single social justice movement every single social justice movement that mobilized 3.5 percent sometimes less but 3.5 percent is that magic number if we mobilize that many people in sustained nonviolent direct action we will win it has never happened in history where 3.5 percent of the population was mobilized and they didn't win but that doesn't mean mobilized to being vegan that means mobilized to taking action so veganism is awesome take one step further take action 3.5 percent you know that's 96.5 percent of the people right now that we don't have to focus on they'll, they'll come later when the laws are changed and they don't have a choice but right now we just need to take action speak boldly for the animals and we can change we can have a constitutional amendment that animals will not be property in the in my lifetime and i'm 30 so i don't want to die before that happens so please join a chapter of dxc save movement wherever start your own and um and let's take action and end this together Um, this is taking a really long time and 
I think the reason it's taking a really long time is because there are so many activists who are willing to take this risk. There's two dozen inside. Folks, an update that um, Julianne is live from the Save Movements page. So if you want to also check it out, they are going live. Is it hands. which Save Movement? Um, the Save Movement, okay, the main page. Um, and so Julianne, where is Julianne right now? She is inside of the slaughterhouse behind me. Um, and she's just talking about what she's seeing inside. Um, and, you know, they're surrounded by animals. And they're being held captive too, of course, not in the same way. But they're sitting inside of the slaughterhouse um, floor in solidarity with the animals inside. And they're not leaving until the police either, you know, um, surrender the animals or they're taken into custody. So she's showing us the little... Does it look like they're going to be arrested? Um, I believe... I believe yes. I, I believe, thought I thought someone was going out. I believe they were waiting for a a car. So let's check it out. So yeah, if you go to the Save Movement, um, you can see simultaneously what is going on inside the solder house. So for people who are just joining, we were all 200 people were inside the solder house. The police shut the doors and they asked everyone to leave. Most people did leave. There are two dozen activists inside who are willing to risk arrest. Yeah. Um, Priya, you know, there's been so many people on this live stream. A lot of them may not have seen at the beginning what yeah. happened with the quail. Do you want to tell us that story? Yeah. So um, we found this little baby quail inside of a trash can and what happens inside routinely we have undercover investigate undercover cameras uh, footage showing that they just throw little birds inside of the the trash can and what that means that that means they're minutes away from being killed and so we opened this trash can and we found uh, these baby quail featherless um, quivering shaking um, just waiting to be killed and even when I reached my hands in there they were so scared of me because imagine Every time a human has approached them, any human hands, it's been to hurt them, to take them away from their families, and ultimately what they fear the most, to take their lives. And so we took this little baby quail from the trash can, and we had a pretty long standoff with the police, um, where ultimately what was decided was the, you know, we, we were saying, I'm ready to go. If you want to arrest me for taking her to the vet, that's fine. But then the police officer took out, she cost $3 because she's considered property. And this police officer took out $3 and um, we proceeded to take the quail out. Now we would not have paid for her because she is not property. Um, but in that moment, the police officer did not know what to do because he kept saying to me, I feel your pain, I feel your pain. And ultimately, that is what happened. We were uh, able to take her to safety. Um, actually, Amy, Amy, do you want to say a few words? Amy came, and um, you you can give us a better update on the little quail. Uh, the little quail is a girl, and she was incredibly hungry and thirsty, um, and so she's been uh, handed off to capable people who are going to provide her with food and water. And um, I have a I have a good feeling that she's going to make it. So. Um, she still had life in her eyes. She was really, really, really stressed. But as soon as she experienced being held by Priya, and then Priya handed her off to me, and she felt, I think she felt safe, she started to sort of come back around. So, um, yeah. just, I mean, I just wish that these people would just spend time with one animal and just be there with the one animal and see that the animal is an individual mm -hmm. and that they want to live and that they're just, they're beautiful and they're curious. I mean, I just, uh, they're, they're miracles of life. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's been an awesome, awesome day. Thank you, yes. DXE. Yeah, we're yeah. together, we save yeah. you know, a lot of animals, and tonight we're gonna go back to another place to bear witness. Awesome, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. In another place. So yeah. we're getting another report saying that the people who are calling animal services are being transferred to the police, um, Oakland Police Department, but please, you know, continue and tell, to tell the police department of Oakland the same thing, that you want, um, that, that, that you support activists, hundreds of activists over here, and you're asking that the police help us get the animals to the shelters because uh, we're doing the right thing. The, the slaughterhouses like this one and every other slaughterhouses violate their own standards because these animals live in filth, they don't have food and water, and they're under extreme distress and under in horrible, violent conditions. Thank you. So we have still hundreds of activists outside. They are standing here. Um, some of them still have red flowers and everyone else is putting them down, making a memorial for the animals. 
and every single person who came into the slaughterhouse today had two red flowers, one that they kept to hold and one that they, um, that they put and tied to a cage. So there are um, red flowers, hundreds of red flowers inside of that slaughterhouse to give the animals just a little bit of, of hope, a little bit of love. And uh, one day, one day we'll have enough people to go in there and take everyone out. Today we did save lives. We saved at least three lives today. Um, but one day we'll go in, we'll be able to take everybody out. But that's only possible if we all join the animal rights movement, we take action, we do go to protests, we go to vigils, we we show we show um, the world what's happening. We do cube of truth, whatever calls to you. Please take action for animals. Please come get me out. And, and they want the same. And let's do it for them. Thank you. So, Paul, you were just uh, live streaming a little bit. Do you want to tell us what you saw inside of the facility? Yeah. Um, or do you have to do something? Else? No, no, it's fine. Uh, we saw what we expected to see. Uh, you know, Wayne has been to this location and scouted it out and sort of told us what to expect. Uh, we saw animals in horrible conditions. Uh, we called animal care services to have them uh, come and help us uh, take custody of the animals and find placement for them. They didn't respond, so we took matters into our own hands and removed the sheep and, uh, and a bird from the trash. And, and a bunny. And a bunny, too. I didn't even know that. Great. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we, we saw animals uh, fear, fearing for their lives, uh, huddled together. Um, there's the smell of death in the air. Um, there are birds on top of dead birds. Uh, I got really good, clear footage of a bird standing on another bird who was dead. The bird on top, I was missing an eye, and uh, I went back into the slaughter area and it was covered in blood, uh, chunks of flesh, instruments of murder, and garbage cans full of victims. It's a horrible place, and there's a reason it doesn't have windows. So we're... Okay, sure. So we're off right now. We're actually taking all the cameras right now. We've already gotten uh, some, some really good leads on press coverage, which is obviously, you know, one of the objectives of what we're doing here today. So we're going to rush home right now and, and cut things up. And um, there's some definitely some local leads, and we think some, some potential national leads too. So we're going to get yeah. on that right now. At one point, there was over 1.2 thousand people watching the live stream at one point. Yeah. So we have a lot of people who are making those calls. Already, so You folks drove all the way from um, Arizona to come here. And do you want to share a little bit about what your experiences were? Hey folks, just an update. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, there are still about 20 to 25 of our fellow activists inside the slaughterhouse. Uh, they are refusing to leave until every single animal gets what they deserve, and that is a, a life that is free, happy, and safe, um, and free from exploitation. I, I don't know about you guys, but I plan to be here until our activist friends are liberated as well. We will not leave them. We are here to provide our support. We're here to provide our presence. Are we down? Thank you, folks. Uh, yeah, so do you want to share a little bit about what your experiences were inside? So the experience is it's obviously very brutal in there. There's animals that I saw trampling each other. There's animals I saw pecking at each other. They were scared. They probably knew that they were going to be killed sometime soon. There, were, there was a baby, a baby that it looked like that was in the trash can, featherless, that it looked like they, they were struggling to live. It was awful in there. And that's obviously the norm. That's how it is at every slaughterhouse everywhere. And it's just awful. It's so important that we're here to stand against that to make sure that it stops happening as soon as possible. Anything you want to add? I was taken back by the smell in there. My my dog just recently passed away. He's very, very sick. And, and the smell of my dog, of my dog's urine, was the same smell I smelled in there. And it tells me that sick animals are sick animals, no matter that they're dogs or our chickens. Mm -hmm. And that was hard. Um, it was beautiful seeing um, 
everyone come to you today. Um, it was hard. Uh, there was a goat in there who I can't name her, um, but she was labeled as 1942. And I will never forget because when we walked in there, when they took the lamb, when they re rescued her, she walked forward and gave an activist a kiss on the nose. And it was. And they said that it's helpful. There is that helpful right now. And I just want to thank everybody here. And if you can hear us, we want to thank you inside. Yeah. 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 And Wayne says he's with you in spirit from inside the police car. They don't have enough police cars here for you all yet. They're probably going to get vans or something. I don't know. But we thank you. And to all the animals inside, we saw you, and we will not forget about you, and we will keep fighting until you're all on this side of that wall. We love you. So we can hear the snapping and the clapping. This is Diane. both come out. There are still probably 20 or so activists um, inside and we'll see if more of them come out. But for those of you who don't know, um, Diane has been such an amazing activist. She was, um, you know, she's done open rescue. She's rescued animals from um, hell holes and she was here today also to rescue animals here and to say that animals are not property. We have hundreds of activists outside here who are supporting all of the people inside too. All of the human, the human people and the non-human people. Thank you to, to Diane. Uh, Diane inside of the police car. Diane has um, been such a such an amazing part of our community. Such an amazing person. So selfless. Um, I think it might 
here that are are the problem that that we understand that many people have jobs yes. that they may not have even chosen had they had the opportunity to choose whatever they want but it's the consumers can, can you address that Amy G? yeah it's a fine demand um, so we're just waiting for other activists who are inside um, to come out we just saw Diane and I think someone else Nathan Diane and Nathan and Wayne have been arrested so yeah. far so the police just don't have enough transportation, you know. This is Oakland Police Department. They're probably trying to get, you know, trying to get a bunch of vans together or something, so. Yeah, we might be here for a while, and yeah. I, I hope that people will, will continue to uh, join us on live stream so we can show support for the other activists who are in there. Yeah, absolutely. Still about 23 activists, I think, by my count. Yeah. I'm not sure if everyone uh, stayed in there who was planning on staying in there, so maybe a few less, but over yeah. two dozen. For those of you who are just tuning in and haven't seen everything that's been going on, um, we were at a slaughterhouse. We are at a slaughterhouse in Oakland. 200, over 200 activists uh, went inside with red flowers, not for hate with the workers, not for hate for the, with the people who are shopping there or the police, but to bring love to the animals. And we went inside, we blocked the slaughter equipment, we stopped the slaughter. Um, the, the doors closed about 30 minutes after we were inside. Everyone came outside, but there are two dozen activists who are in there um, who are willing to be arrested if that's what it takes. And what we're asking people to do is to call Oakland Animal Services, tell them what you saw on the live stream, tell them that you saw um, animal cruelty, and uh, ask them to please come investigate this slaughterhouse um, and uh, take the animals to the shelter, take, give them veterinary care and adopt them into loving homes. We will help. We will do whatever we can to find these animals loving homes. Um, and uh, for those of you who didn't watch, we did though, we did manage to rescue at least three animals, three different species of animals, a baby lamb, a rabbit, and a quail, a quail who was found in the garbage can, literally in the garbage can. Um, and we took her and they're, they're on their way to the vet and they're on their way to a good place. And this is what it's gonna take for people to take animal rights seriously, for people to, to realize that the law is wrong. The law is wrong, animals are not property. Go on, be brave. Go on, make history. Bring justice to the life lost. Bring justice to the life lost. It's every day. They will try to convince you that humane murder is justified. But believe me, I don't want to die. But I'm at your mercy. And you are the difference. Be the voices of the silence. And the silence of the violence. Organize. Oh. So, so far, four activists have been arrested. Wayne, Diane, Nathan, and Cassie. We're expecting about 20 more. Um, for some reason, Wayne and Nathan got to be in the same car together. Um, they're there, and we have um, 
Diane and Cassie over here and Diane's very loving husband who is maybe a little nervous, but I think Diane is okay. She's gonna be okay and, and they're in there. Uh, we'll see who else is coming out soon. I just want to thank you all for being patient. Of course, uh, we're, we're waiting for the other activists who are inside to come out. But I just wanted to also say that, you know, though we left with some individuals today from inside of this facility, I just want to remind everyone that there's hundreds still languishing inside. And I cannot tell you what I saw today. I have blood on the bottom of my shoes. I have the scent of suffering and, and blood on my, um, on my dress as the little quail I was carrying had blood on her, she was shaking, but I could feel her heartbeat right next to mine. And I did tell the police officer that when they, when they asked me, you know, um, to give her back, I said, I can feel her heart racing. And she thinks that she's about to be hurt. But for the first time in her life, she's actually gonna be taken to a place where someone's gonna care for her. Please, please don't let, let her be taken away from me. And we didn't, <clears throat> she's in a safe place now. But I just want all of us to think about the animals that are inside still suffering and we're here not only for the activists to support solidarity with them but above all we're here for the animals that are inside who we're asking please you know give them to us give those animals a better life do the right thing what's happening inside of this facility is violating california's animal cruelty laws so we're not here to break the law we're here to do what everyone would do in a case of extreme animal cruelty this is extreme animal cruelty. What's happening inside of every slaughterhouse is extreme animal cruelty. So please, let us take them to a shelter. Help us take them to the shelter. And I want to thank the people on live who've been making calls to the Oakland Police Department and Animal Services. Yeah, it's NBC News, I want to talk to you. Okay. Hey, give me one second and I'll hand the phone so to So if you just heard what Tamara said, um, the news is, is on the phone. They want to talk to Priya. We already have journalists here already who are covering this. Um, and it is so important that we get the story out in the media because we need people, the mainstream, to see what is happening and to see that there are people who are take, willing to take action. You look at this crowd and there are people of all ages, races, genders, sexual orientations, ability. Everyone is represented in this movement. Every single person can take action. Um, doesn't matter um, what you look like or doesn't matter where you live. There's so many things that you can do uh, to, to take action for animals. And the hardest thing, I think, is just taking that first step, being brave, joining a community or starting your own um, where you can speak boldly for animals. So um, we can see Priya, who's doing the interview right now. NBC News called and they said they're in San Francisco. They're getting over here as soon as possible, and they wanna, you know, they wanna cover what's going on over here because it is something that people are not used to hearing. This is a first of its kind. 
Samer, you were you were inside. Um, is there anything that you wanted to share or talk about what yeah. you saw in there? Um, so I'm Arab. My family's Arab. This is uh, a halal slaughterhouse. Uh, the people who work here are Arabs, and so I understand like the culture that they come from because that's the culture that I grew up in. Um, and like I remember when I first went vegan, like I had to when I told my family, they would say like, "Hey, like that's just not how life works. Like animals are here for us." Uh, to use them and really that's not true at all like um, animals aren't here for humans to abuse them animals are here with us you know not for us um, and so it's not one second sorry Samer Samer didn't make the cut so um, the people who are arrested seem to be getting unarrested here um, not quite sure what exactly is going on. Uh, Wayne has been sitting in a police car for about an hour. Uh, actually, I have no concept of time right now. Um, and he is getting out. Diane is out. Uh, Nathan is out. They were also in police cars. Cassie is still inside the police car. Um, see her in there. Not quite sure what's going to happen to her. Um, Do you want to say anything, Wayne, to the people yeah. on live stream? So what we're doing is the officers are exercising the discretion to cite and release us. This is pretty common in mass arrest cases, but it's also common in cases where the officers don't feel the, the people necessarily deserve to get arrested for whatever reason. And obviously in this case, I think... Thank you. Well, that's a very important liberation pledge right there. Take the liberation pledge. So in many instances where you know the officers feel like they're countervailing circumstances, that mean, you know, maybe the activists don't deserve to be arrested. I've still got some bruises on my hands. Uh, that does happen. Sometimes you're going to get arrested, but it's no big deal. It'll heal up in a day or two, maybe a week. But when there are countervailing circumstances, sometimes the officers exercise the discretion, decide to do what's called a site police. So we have to appear. It looks like we're being charged with trespassing, misdemeanor trespassing. And, you know, we have to appear on November 21st or an arrest warrant will be put out for us. But this is about what we expected to happen. Um, you know, honestly, I feel like the officers were pretty moved by what happened inside. We show them animals drowning in blood, in their own blood, animals in garbage cans, animals being trampled inside of their cages, animals confined so tightly that they're literally not even able to stand up or spread their wings. I mean, the cages are so, are so small that these birds cannot even stand up fully. Like, imagine not being able to stand up fully. You just raise your, your own body up without hitting the ceiling above you. So. You know, I think the officers understood this, and they say they're going to, to start an active animal cruelty investigation, certainly when animals are eating each other alive. I don't know what cruelty is if it's not animals eating each other alive, but our bigger concern is that we want the city of Oakland and the city of Berkeley and the city of San Francisco to recognize that animals are living creatures. They are not things. And we need to change the laws so our action is the one that's legally protected, not their actions. They are torturing animals inside that slaughterhouse. So we want to create a system where law enforcement and the political system are not going after the people trying to assist the animals. They're going after the people abusing the animals. And taking actions like this is, is taking us down that pathway. We can see Cassie also being released right now. Cassie is being released. She uh, was NBC inside. is coming here. NBC coming right now. Diane, oh, um, do you want to share any words? You walked out of there looking very stoic, very brave. Yes, yes. It was, it, uh, you know, anything that I would have to go through is nothing compared to what what happens to the innocent beings in there. I mean, I was surrounded by a bin, I was in a, surrounding a bin of sheep. Let's, let's go see, oh, not quite sure what's going on over there, sorry. <laughs> I was surrounding a bin of sheep and goats, and they were just, you know, kind of, their heads down, they kind of given up on life. Yeah. Basically. Some of them were vomiting, some of them were coughing, wow. some of them were like gasping for air, and it was just, it was heartbreaking. And they're yeah. just so innocent and gentle, and yet people use them to abuse and, and to use for something they don't even need and it just it breaks my heart it just breaks my heart well thank you for doing that thank you uh diane we have cassie also been released here um do you have anything that you want to say cassie um 
Well, while I was in the car, I could see calls pouring in from people to alert the authorities that violence is happening here. So I'm really grateful that everybody's supporting us here to help these animals and that we can make that statement stronger by risking our own safety. Thank you, Cassie. But it also shows you the power of nonviolent direct action to get the issue on the table. And if we get the issue on the table, we'll convince everybody. And so we need to do more things like this to show the world what's happening behind these closed doors. And when they see what's happening, they want action. I mean, even the officer who had been called to stop us said, you know what, I, I want this poor little bird to get veterinary care. I don't want, she's not, I mean, he saw her. And did anyone see this little quail? Yes. She didn't have any feathers. She was barely able to open her eyes. We found her in a trash bin, unable to stand up. And the officer paid to get the bird out because he did not want to see that bird suffer. And Priya, do you want to share what it was like just taking her out? Yeah, I, I know I already did share with some folks, but um, I mean, she was in a trash can. This little bird had no feathers on her. I mean, she was one of the ones that wasn't even moving. And you know, you do that when you're you're pretty much hopeless. And all I remember is just holding her. And these birds have, or these animals inside, they've never known anything good to come from human hands. It's only suffering, being taken away from their families, you know, about to be killed. So she was she was very scared, but. You know, um, I know Amy, uh, where's Amy Jean Davis? She did uh, take, ultimately take uh, the little one to safety and now she's on her way to the vet. But um, I just remember her heart beating next to mine and telling the police officers that you can't, you can't take her away. Her heart is beating and my heart is beating and we're, the, we're equal. In our ability to feel pain and to suffer, we're equal. And I'm so glad that she's doing okay now. Oh, Amy Jean, is Amy Jean here? Actually, um, she's coming. She's coming. She took the bird. Can you explain what happened to the bird? Um, well, uh, we handed her off to some people that are going to get her food, water, and vet care. Um, when I had her in my arms, I was able to give her a little bit of water. She was looking around for food. Um, at first, she was very scared and frozen, uh, just kind of trembling, terrified. But then I think that she was starting to feel safe. That's when she was starting to look around, look at me. She would look up at me like this. And then she started looking around for food. And so she was, it really didn't take long for her to feel safe and start to return to her natural behaviors of just being curious about the world and looking for food and water. So, but she's in safe hands now. She's mostly featherless and, and she had uh, dried blood all over her. Uh, so she's gonna get bed care, food and water and love. Woo! Yeah. So I think it hasn't been announced yet. Do you guys know that NBC is on their way here right now, too? Cool. NBC wow. News is on their way here. So the entire world will hear about what's happening inside this slaughterhouse. And again, this is the power of nonviolent direct action. We did this together. This would not have been possible if not for all of you here today fighting together with us to give the animals a voice. Because they do have a voice, right? They're literally screaming. We heard their screams. We heard them clucking. We heard their crying. We heard some of them begging to be taken out of the garbage bin. And, and we did this together. Um, and one of the really powerful things about nonviolent direct action is, again, when you, when you really just crystallize the issue and you force people to make a decision, do you want to take a side of the people torturing and slaughtering animals, forcing them to eat each other alive, or the side of nonviolent activists who are just trying to make the world a more compassionate place, most people are going to be with us. And we showed that today, when even the officer was willing to pay to have one of these animals released. Are more activists coming up? Let's make sure we give a big round of applause to anybody who comes out. Folks, can we give a big round of applause to this yeah. surgeon, please? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So this officer, this officer paid for an animal to be released. This officer. Maybe we should do that. Maybe it might not be that. So for those of you who are new, just joining the live stream, I'm going to give a brief recap of what has been happening, what's going on. Uh, over 200 activists came to this slaughterhouse in Oakland, non-violently with love in our hearts and flowers in our hands, and we went inside the slaughterhouse and we uh, bore witness to the suffering of hundreds of animals, rabbits, quails, chickens, sheep, goats, 
um, all of these animals inside of there and activists went to the place inside the slaughterhouse where the actual killing happens. They put their bodies in front of the machines where the animals are being killed, um, where the knives are, and they blocked that and they prevented any more animals from being killed today. And we stood inside there and we tied red flowers onto all of the cages of the, um, for the animals. And while this was happening, activists were also documenting the conditions, finding particularly sick and injured animals and taking them out. And we rescued at least three animals today, uh, a little lamb, a chicken, uh, sorry, a quail, and a bunny. And uh, I think Samer is going to interrupt me now. Hey, so if you want like a funny story about the bunny that we helped rescue. Sure. So she was really, she was really scared at first. She was like freaking out and like trembling. Um, but once we stopped the car, um, we were just like waiting there for a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes. Um, she was able to just like hang out and chill and like one of the things about living in here is that bunnies naturally they need to uh, chew on things. That's how they um, wear down their teeth. Um, in here like there's nothing for them to chew on. And as soon as she was outside, like she was able to chew a couple uh -oh, holes <laughs> through my pants. And so these are all freshly made bunny holes. Is it worth it? Oh, absolutely. I would do it again, too, you know, yeah, so. so. Get your pants chewed by a bunny. Uh, before, before Samer interrupted me, what I was saying was that we rescued these animals, and then the police were here, and they basically told Priya, like, you can't walk away with this animal because you're going to get arrested, and Priya said, like, okay, go ahead, arrest me. You know, we're going to not let this, this quail die. And so she's safe now. The, the bird is safe. She's at a vet. And then they shut the doors of the slaughterhouse, um, completely uh, basically shut down the operation for the day and most of the activists came outside and stood there with their flowers but about 20 to 30 activists remained inside willing to risk arrest. Four activists have been arrested so far um, but they've actually now been released and um, are just going to be right now they're being charged with misdemeanor trespass. Um, we'll see what happens they have to appear in court later in, in November um, but what you can do this is what's really important there have been thousands and thousands of people who've been watching this live stream what you can do first off is call Oakland Animal Services and tell them what you saw in the live stream and tell them that you want them to um, rescue the rest of these animals from the slaughterhouse take them to their shelter give them veterinary care and then um, adopt them into loving homes and of course we are going to assist with that process and the second thing that you can do is um, find an active this group in your city, uh, the Save Movement, Anonymous for the Voiceless, Direct Action Everywhere, there's all these groups. Find a group and join it. And if there is no group, start one. Because this is how we're going to change the world for animals. It's not just by quietly being vegan and being, um, you know, shy and scared to tell people how we feel about non-human animals. It's about, it's, we're going to have to speak up. We're going to have to take nonviolent direct action. We're going to have to sometimes put our bodies and our freedom on the line, risking arrest because there are laws right now in the books that say that animals are property and we know that's wrong and sometimes what we need to do is challenge those unjust laws. So we had over 200 people here today. Um, we're having our next big event in May and we want you to be there. Who knows what's going to happen? 1,000 people. Um, the Animal Liberation Conference put on by Direct Action Everywhere and the SAVE Movement. Um, so I hope that everyone on the live stream will be there because we can together we really will make history. And just another note, right now we are waiting for NBC News to come. They're going to be covering this. <laughs> so most of the activists are standing over by the police cars. We still have some people here um, outside the facility. The door has been shut, so it's closed for the day. And, and we have flowers here left for the animals who are not yet rescued from this facility. We need your help. You know, we, we have what a couple hundred people here today, but imagine if we had 2,000 instead of 200. You know, we could walk to every factory farm and slaughterhouse in the entire state of California and do exactly what we did. 
and force a dialogue in this country and ultimately force policy change. We want animals to be recognized as living creatures. Right now, the legal system, when I called Oakland Animal Services, literally the response they gave me was, we're not going to do anything about this because these animals are property. They're things. It's a property crime. And so we can send animal services out maybe a month or two later, but those animals will continue to suffer. They'll continue to eat each other alive. They'll continue to collapse on the ground and trample each other to death because they're just things. This is Kitty. Folks, Kitty's coming out. Someone just commented that um, there's already 57,000 views on this video. Yeah. Um, there's over, I think, over 1.5. Yeah. So, you know, this just shows that there are so many people who are supporting these, these actions, these activists. Um, and um, we, we thank you so much, everyone who's on the live stream. And thank you so much because you made this possible. Yeah. Can I say something? Yes. We're going to interrupt everyone, you if someone else gets arrested. Everyone who's on the live stream and is called Oakland Animal Services. You've been part of this action too. The, the reason the cops, I've got some bruises on my hand, but otherwise I'm no worse for wear. And the cops are gonna have an active investigation of animal cruelty. One of the cops helped us release one of the animals who was dying and that animal's now at the vet. That only happened because a lot of you called. Who called? Did all of you call? Are, are you sharing this live stream right now? Are you sharing the live stream? So because you're calling and sharing this live stream and making sure other people call, the city of Oakland understands that citizens care about animal cruelty. They want it to stop. So you're part of this team too. And if we come together, we're all part of the same unified team to fight for animal rights. We can get every single one of these animals out. We don't have to just reserve ourselves to one or two or three. We can get all 200, 300, 400, all 10 billion animals. We can shut down every slaughterhouse in this country if we get to the point where we have thousands of people willing to take nonviolent direct action. So let's do it. So let's some do people it. are you know, asking, like, well, you know, why would you break the law? This is trespassing. Why don't you just you know, maybe like protest outside? And can you explain why we did that? The first thing to say is the real criminal activity that's happening at factory farms and slaughterhouses is not happening because activists are trying to give vet care to animals. It's happening because the animal abusers are abusing animals. Animal abuse is a crime, and it's wrong, and it needs to stop now. And, and if somebody is committing a crime, we have the legal right, in my view, to go into these places and alleviate that suffering to stop those crimes from being committed. But the truth is, yes, the legal system is very deficient right now. Animals are just things under, under the law. They don't have standing to sue. They don't have legal rights. They are completely invisible to the law. But what we've seen time and time again in the history of social justice is when a rule is profoundly wrong, sometimes the only way to change the rule is to break it. And if we think that animals are not things, that they're living creatures, we need to be willing to break the rules and show the world that they're not things and say, we need to treat animals not as pieces of garbage that we throw into a trash bin and let them starve to death or trample to death. We need to treat them as living creatures who deserve to be taken to the vet when they're suffering. So, and we want the law to follow us, but the law always follows what the people do. We can't wait for the law to change. We have to make the law change by engaging in acts of civil disobedience. So I'm so proud of everyone here for doing exactly that today. We broke the rules, and by breaking the rules, we're gonna change the world. 
And some people, you know, they might think, oh, this is just a particularly bad slaughterhouse, or it's because it's This a is wall, probably, honestly, thing. one of the best slaughterhouses in the world. Compared to the 150,000 chickens at Mary's Chicken that are killed. Oh. and stand for one moment in their lives. This is worse than a burning building. And if there's a burning building, you just go right into the building and take people out. And that's what Caroline understands from her day job. And that's why she's here with us today. And we want to encourage all of you to eventually get to the same point. I'm not saying everyone needs to be willing to engage in civil disobedience now. We have to be careful and strategic and train people so we're able to do this, but we need to do more of this to get all these laws to change and to pressure the city council of Oakland, the state legislature of California, eventually the U.S. Congress, and even the United Nations to pass a bill of animal rights so none of this stuff happens any longer. This does not belong in a good world. It is a slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse. That should not exist in a just world. We need to shut every place like this down. Not because we hate the owners of the workers. A lot of these people are doing it because they have nothing else, right? This is why low-income communities of color so often are the ones who work in these evil places because they have no other options. And that shows you the intersection between animal rights and human rights. They abuse the workers and they also abuse the animals. So let's come together, do nonviolent direct action, get the issue on the table, get the animals out, provoke a conversation, and force the people in power to pass a bill of animal rights faster than any of you think. Let's do it in 10 years, not 40. injuries because they know the, the police know that you know it, what's happening inside of this place isn't, isn't right either kitty do you want to share anything about what you saw in there not really it's terrible i mean you filmed it too right yeah there's some people who are just joining the live stream now they haven't seen everything but. oh yeah well we were in the the room when they killed them so when we walked in, they had like a garbage can that had like, uh, I saw one live, live hen in the garbage can and we tried to talk to the workers and they all left and then we like linked arms around the garbage. So I don't know where that hen went. I didn't see her after, but then we found the quail and I don't know how many we were able to save, but so we were in there for a while just like standing there Kitty, really. you don't even know this, but what happened outside, did no. you see what happened with the quail? No, we couldn't see anything. One of the officers was so moved by the situation that officer paid for the quail to be released. They rushed to the vet. Wow. The officer with the slaughterhouse called the rest us to get us out of the here. Officer with the vet? So we, we're just hearing that another activist, um, Alexander Paul, who's a very famous actor, actress actually, is going to be coming out and um, we're going to wait for her and, and give her the support. So what, what are you feeling right now, Priya? Well, I, I mean, I remember rescuing baby Miley with Alexandra. Alexandra Paul, for those of you who don't know, is a former Baywatch actress, and she is a committed animal rights activist and open rescue investigator, um, and here she comes now.
Rachel. 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 Some more activists. I've kind of lost count, but there should be more people inside. Too. We're going to wait for them to come out. We still have all of these people here. Uh, Rain is a really amazing photographer. Rain, did you take any photos in there that you can already kind of remember in your head that you want to talk about? Oh uh, yeah, there's this goat who has a, a very swollen left eye, and they look very sick. So we have a journalist going in from NBC. He's going to go inside. Um, sorry, Rain. It's okay. I'm going to go see if sure, I can yeah, catch yeah. him. I'll go ahead, back go to ahead. you. Uh, um, yes, or I can text you at the moment so that you have that. live streaming from the Save Movement's Facebook page from the inside of the slaughterhouse. But I've been told um, there are still people in there. Um, I think the NBC news reporter is going to want to see some of that taken out. But let's go back and um, uh, maybe, Rain, you want to keep saying what you saw about the sheep or goat with, with, with their eye. Yeah, I, I think all I can say is that all of them are sick. All of them are suffering. You can, you can see it in their eyes that they're all wanting to be free. And so um, I, think, I think all of the vegans and all of the people who understand compassion should be doing things like this, direct action and open rescue. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, so you're an amazing photographer and you just decided to kind of help us with your skills here. And here we have Matthew Dempsey, who's also big right now. Also. 
So if you can't hear um, right now, you can hear, I don't know if you can hear, but you can hear the chickens inside. They are crying, you can hear them through that window. Um, you know, there's still animals in there. So if you haven't made the call yet, if you're, if you're new and you, you're just joining, if you haven't made the call yet, call Oakland Animal Services. Tell them that animals are being abused at this slaughterhouse in Oakland. Ask them to come and seize the animals, take these animals to the vet, um, provide them with shelter, and adopt them into loving homes like they would a dog or a cat. So people who are, who are just joining the live stream now, um, what's been going on? We've been here since about 2.40 p.m. Um, in Oakland and activists went inside of the slaughterhouse. They were bearing witness to the goats, the sheep, the chickens, the quail, the rabbits that were suffering inside of this facility. Um, we were investigating finding animals who really needed immediate medical care and we took those animals out, including a quail who was literally found inside of a garbage can. Um, when we took them out, we're, they're now at the vet. They're going, they're going to the vet and then they're going to a sanctuary. And um, then the police came and they asked everyone to leave and we tied red flowers on the cages inside for the animals and then most of us left and came outside and they closed the door to the slaughterhouse and the slaughterhouse shut down for the day. But there were activists inside and, and another one over... over a dozen activists who have been arrested. There are still activists inside of the slaughterhouse and they are saying that they are not going to leave um, unless all the animals are, are coming with them. So some of them are being arrested, but there are still some inside. For folks who are watching, you can also go um, to the Save Movement's Facebook page. They are um, live streaming from the inside. And now we have uh, the NBC reporter here. So, uh, are the uh, owners inside? They are. Are they approachable? So we just had a training today from Jane Velez Mitchell about how important it is to get um, you know, mainstream media coverage. And here we have NBC um, here. But they won't let him inside. They won't let him inside, even though he is part of the media. He's, you know, he's just there to cover the story. One of the officers paid for one of the quails to be released because he was moved by his cow perfectly the end of the summer. So she was like not able to walk because of the bottom of the track. So, uh, figure out how to get this. So more and more, I think the mainstream media is starting to take note that animal rights is a serious issue. If you haven't already seen, we just had the amazing piece in The Intercept that covered the rescue of Lily the pig. And um, we just found out that that piece was the most read and shared piece in The Intercept ever. Like not that week, not that month, the most read and shared piece in The Intercept, which just goes to show you that people care about animal rights and the news should be starting to cover this more and more. Glenn Greenwald, who wrote that story, did say that he is going to be making animal rights a much larger part of his work. And he is such a credi uh, credible and incredible journalist, and we, we really appreciate that. So now we have NBC here, um, and hopefully also an intercept piece on this, on this maybe also.
So there are, there is at least one more, um, maybe more activists inside, um, inside the slaughterhouse. Thank you. So I have a funny story about that bunny. Um, so one of the things about living in these cages is that like bunnies have like a natural urge to chew because their teeth are always growing, and in these cages they have nothing to chew on. Um, when we rescued her, um, as she settled down and she was sitting on my lap, uh, she actually found that the denim in my jeans <laughs> was a very fun thing to chew on. So she gave me a couple holes in it. But, you know, anything for the animals. And like, she's going to a sanctuary now. And she's going to be happy, safe, and free. Um, so, like, I don't know. I just wish we could rescue all of them. Too. I think we all feel that way. But, you know, they say when you've saved one life, you've saved the world. This has been an extraordinary, extraordinary afternoon. Uh, tremendous, tremendous activism coordinated down to the minute. Hundreds of activists arriving at the slaughterhouse, led by Wayne Shug, who is in the white shirt, who got arrested himself. And uh, joined by numerous other activists, including Michael Gibson, as I So, Jake and Rachel, you were both inside the slaughterhouse and, and got arrested. Do you want to share anything about that experience? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really just a small sacrifice. We were in there only for like an hour or two compared to them spending their entire lives in these cages. And um, there were like six chickens who were just walking around who had gotten loose, who were walking around freely, and they just looked so happy to be out of that cage. And all I really wanted to do was just, just like grab them, and I couldn't, I couldn't really offer anyone a lot of comfort other than just just sitting there, just talking to them, telling them that I care, and um, yeah, it just, it's just a really horrible place, so many individuals dying every day and nobody even thinking about it, no one even acknowledging that they're victims, um, I'm just glad that we could all be here today and offer them a little bit of comfort. Jake, is there anything that you wanted to add? Uh, yeah, so I've been in, like, farms before where chickens are, and, like, inside of this slaughterhouse, like, it was much worse than I was expecting. Just, like, the smell and, like, liquid that's who knows what, like, all over the ground, and just, like, body parts everywhere, just, like, seeing trash cans full of body parts, and, like, live animals inside of trash cans. Uh, and it's just nice to be in there to bear witness and maybe show them for a little bit that there are some humans that care about them and give them a little bit of comfort. I wish, looking back, that we could have brought them some more water because a lot of them didn't have water at all, but the ones that did, it was really dirty. And... Yeah. Thank you. Tiffany, um, you were one of the activists who went inside and, and was brought out in handcuffs. Is there anything that you wanted to say about your experience, what you saw in there? Um, I mean, I knew it was going to be like bad conditions, but I just didn't expect them to be that bad. Um, I, mean, um, I got to peek on, I didn't get to actually go inside the kill floor, but I got to peek inside of it. There was like feathers, um, I saw a head, uh, and just in the actual cages, they were just crammed in there. It smelled horrible. Um, a lot of us actually started coughing, sort of just being like inside so long, and I can't imagine living my entire life in that like situation. Is there anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, Kitty, Amin, and I, uh, we were on the kill floor. We were there for hours. Uh, the smell was just horrible. There were whole trash cans of blood, trash cans of organs and skin and feathers. And Hello! It was Hi. just horrible. Hi. Hello. Folks, can you raise your hand if you're arrested? We're just trying to get a count for the media. Raise your hand if you're arrested. We're trying to get a count for the media. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen so far. Did you get those two? I got those two. Over here. Oh, Nathan. Seventeen. Seventeen so far. And Yeah, I counted myself. Yeah, I counted. Julianne and some other folks. I know. Julianne. I can start looking at my list and figuring out who's left inside. Yeah, some people definitely were thinking about getting arrested. And I, but I, I think I know who they are. Yeah. Um, 
So Priya, while I check my list, why don't you uh, start talking on the computer? You can, or the, okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we're just waiting for activists inside to um, come outside. A, a bunch of you might have seen um, my co-organizer Julianne live on the Save Movement's Facebook page giving us coverage um, of what is happening inside. Um, we're just waiting, you know, we are waiting for these activists to come outside and honestly there's still a slight hope inside of me that somehow the animals will be relinquished to us because, you know, there's hundreds of people out here. Even a police officer helped us get an animal out today. So, you know, why can't we help all of the animals? So, there's still that hope. Do you know um, if Sanjeev, Andrew, and Anna are still in there? Um, Sanjeev is no longer not in there. Okay, um, so we have, um, I think, Anna and Andrew and Anna. Andrew, Anna, Julianne. And Julianne and John. Yes, yeah. How did you do that? Nice to meet you. I'm glad they didn't run. Folks, this is a journalist who managed to stay in there this entire time. <laughs> Michael Bodley, say hi to Michael why did you not, not get arrested? Not pretty good at not getting arrested. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's look at another story here. So we had hey, everyone. Um, we are just waiting for a few more people to come outside. It's been a long day. Um, we have saved some animals, and they're on their way to the vet right now, which is obviously um, cause for a lot of rejoice, but, you know, a joyful moment. However, we are still standing outside of a slaughterhouse, and there are still hundreds of animals who are um, probably going to be killed tomorrow. And so, you know, we're out, out here um, to bring, bring uh, light to what's happening over here, and there's um, two news stations who are waiting to interview us so we're probably going to be um, continue to give as much coverage from here as possible and thank you so much for joining us here and um, though activists were arrested today you 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 probably heard people clapping because they're they're you know when they're sacrificed um, we are happy we're happy that there's more and more people who are willing to make a sacrifice sad for what's happening in the animals but we are definitely happy that more and more people are doing this. Yeah, and by my count, there are still five activists in there. Um, yeah, um, if we had, you know, this was planned. People uh, took this risk knowingly, and so we're, we're hoping that, um, you know, all those people will um, continue to speak up for animals, and um, we, we are expecting the rest of them to be coming out soon, and we're, we're ready to have the news here also and give an interview. So hundreds, hundreds of activists are, are still here waiting for the rest of the people to be, um, to be let out of the slaughterhouse. Um, by my time, we have been here for over an hour and a half uh, bearing witness to the animals. We have the, the news cameras getting ready to, to start up here. So, so Leslie uh, was one of the activists who were arrested. Um, is there anything that you want to say to all the people watching on live stream? Uh, yes, I would like to say that the chickens that we saw in there were really, really sick. And the conditions were hideous and filthy. And I went on to the kill floor and you could see chickens' legs, chickens' heads just on the floor. And clearly, the people who own this slaughterhouse and work in this slaughterhouse have become so numb to the cruelty and suffering that is going on in there that um, we felt, DXC, we felt we had to step in and we have to say, hey, hey, this is not right. And the, 
this is wrong. These are living beings, and they deserve to be happy, safe, and free, and not suffering. And so we just have to, we have to wake up people. And if it takes getting arrested, well, it takes getting arrested. Yeah, and thank, thank you for making that sacrifice last week. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. This is Michael. He's one of our photographers. I, I was inside taking photographs, and one, one of the, one of our activists came up to me and said, "You have to see this." And there was the dead body of a chicken in this cage, and the other chickens were standing on the dead body. So, because that way they could get, they had to get out to where the, there was some food outside, outside their cage, and they have to stick their necks out through the bars to peck at food. And they were standing, they were like, like three of them, three chickens, th three were standing on this other, other dead, this dead chicken. It was just horrible, just, just the most horrible thing. And then there were chickens at the very back, there were these cages, and behind the cages, there were chickens that had somehow managed to get out. So they were all on the ground, and then above, chickens were sticking their necks out and looking down at them like, oh wow, I wish I could at least get out of this cage. But it was horrible, and it was yeah. one of the most horrible. I've never experienced anything so so horrible as what is of what I saw up in there. Yeah, and Michael is taking a lot of photos, and I'm sure that we'll see all of those photos really soon. We'll post them on Facebook. Um, and over here we have lots of activities. AJ, um, you were back there on the kill floor. Uh, do you want to? They stop the people from killing. Yeah, no, I know. I saw. Do you want to share a little bit about your experience? Yeah. Um, well, as we walked in there, he was in the process of killing a bird, and um, the deed was done for that one. He threw in the trash can, but we were able to stop any further killing going on, and um, he stopped, and we just start blocked a trash can full of live birds so that he couldn't get to them anymore, um, and we just stood there for a while. There was a bucket of blood, a trash can full of blood. Um, there was you know, cones, racks of cones where there were piles and piles of buckets full of feathers. Um, but You know, over 20 activists who um, were arrested today, and we're hoping that you know the charges will be dropped. Um, right now, they are being cited and released with misdemeanor trespass. And part of the reason why they are being released today already is because there are so many people, and I'm going to show you. is that the reason that these activists are being cited and released, the reason that we were able to save at least three lives today is because there were so many people here in person and so many people watching on live stream. You guys made it possible. Otherwise, if there was only a few people who came to the slaughterhouse, they would have shut the door down and thrown us in prison. But when we have this much support online and offline, it really makes these things possible. Animal liberation did happen today. And so what I would ask you all to do if you are online is find a community that you can join 
and go get offline too and um, start doing activism in the streets. We need both. We all need to do both. Uh, we need to be sharing and posting on social media and we need to be out there bearing witness and protesting and showing people the truth. Um, so find a DXE chapter, find a Save Movement chapter, find an anonymous for the Voiceless chapter, start your own organization, do whatever you need to do to feel comfortable, but push yourself a little bit, a little bit outside of your comfort zone to make animal liberation a reality. So um, we might be having an interview soon. I'm going to show you that with Priya. Uh, come a little closer if you like. Uh, tell me your name and how to spell. My name is about what you guys do? Uh, well, after with a group called Direct Action Everywhere, hundreds of us walked inside of the slaughterhouse behind me, uh, we're holding red flowers, and um, we proceeded inside. Uh, we tied flowers to the cages of animals, and uh, a small team of us went inside on the floor. Um, some, of the, some of the people who went inside were able to uh, tell the workers who were inside to stop uh, killing the animals, and um, then we also took three animals out of this facility. And um, while we were coming out with a little quail, we found it in a trash can. Um, the, police, the, the police asked us to, you know, give this give this little quail back to them. And um, we said that, you know, we're here to, uh, to we're okay with being here, say, but we can't uh, not take this little quail to the vet. So um, what happened in that, what happened then was uh, this police officer uh, just gave three dollars for this pill and we, we took her to safety. So these animals are on, on their way to the bed. Yeah, you, you mentioned three animals, what were the other two animals? <laughs> a bunny and a, um, and a little baby. In, in video that I saw, it, it looks like you were actually holding the lamb. Um, yes, I was yeah. assisting uh, holding the, yeah. the lamb and also uh, the baby quail. Um, who was, you know, she had no feathers on her body. She uh, was probably going to minutes away from being killed because when the animals are thrown inside of the trash can, that means that they're pretty much about to, about to be killed. The, uh, the, can you say, you, by the way, were, can I just interrupt? Were you part of one? You might mention that the lambs, some of the lambs have feces all over them. So they have feces on their body. You, you, you mentioned that there was a, that there was a, 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 a quail and then there was a rabbit and a, and a lamb. Yeah. Where were they taken? Um, they're they're currently being taken to the vet. You know, these animals are in dire medical need of um, medical attention. So the, the the sheep they were they have feces all over them. They were actually um, defecating on themselves while we approached them because they've never known anything good to come from um, human hands. Um, <clears throat> And so right now they're basically uh, on their way to getting medical attention. You know what some people who are watching this are saying? They're saying this is food. This is how people have eaten the entire existence of humanity. What's your answer? To that? Well, our answer is that they're not food and um, that they're living beings. And one of the reasons that we are here today is because we want everyone, including the public, uh, public officials um, of the city of Oakland, of the city of Berkeley, and, and Al Alameda County, to recognize these animals as the living beings that they are. So what we are asking for is uh, a bill of rights for animals uh, to be recognized as sentient beings. Um, when we walk inside of this place, we can see that these animals feel pain, just like us. You know, they cry. Um, these birds, when they're being taken to slaughter, you can hear their screams uh, crowding the slaughterhouse. So we know that these animals are not things, that they feel pain, and I think that the workers inside would acknowledge that as well. But it, is, but it is food. People do eat, and they do consider it food. This is how people have eaten since the beginning of time. People eat animals as food, right? I'm, I'm not telling you something you don't know already. Yeah, <clears throat> so, you know, while people will say that animals are food, our answer is that, you know, science has proven that these animals feel pain, that they're not food, and that, in fact, they uh, they have they should have the same right to live as all of us. So, you know, when you hear animals crying, when you see that they're being taken to trash cans uh, with uh, holding their legs and they're, and they're scream screaming all while this is happening, we know that these animals are not food, just like we know that dogs who are killed inside of slaughterhouses in China are, are not food, and those dogs uh, that we live with at home are no different than these animals that are inside. There's a, there, there's, um, 
There's actually California penal codes that uh, describe livestock as property. And, uh, I mean, there's video of, of you and of other people actually physically taking property out of a business. Are you concerned at all about these charges? <clears throat> Well, that's a great question, uh, and you know what we're doing inside is a form of nonviolent direct action called open rescue. So, but, but you've actually physically taken property from a business. Are you concerned about physically having evidence of you walking into a business, picking up property, and then walking out? No, we're not concerned. And in fact, the dozens of activists. There was 22 activists who were arrested today. Um, you know, they're they're. They're, they're okay with being arrested, and their basis for doing that is that these animals deserve uh, to be free, and if they're not free, then we don't want to be either, and um, that is why we're here today, and even though we were arrested and we did uh, take these animals, we strongly believe that we did not commit a crime, that the real crime is happening um, uh, when animals are being hurt, because this place, just like every other slaughterhouse, is violating um, violating standards because anytime animals are being killed, it is going to be unsafe, it is going to be unsanitary, there is going to be filth, and ultimately the animals are going to be hurt, which um, does not make any sense if uh, if you know these places are claiming that you know in fact it's okay it's okay to do this, but you know we saw inside that that the California uh, animal cruelty law was was being violated. Has, has this place been cited by any California inspectors for any violations of the law? Um, I'm, I actually don't, I don't there know that, maybe no I can. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 I'm, I'm, curi I'm curious, um, there, this organization has also done similar acts at businesses in Chinatown. And, uh, I mean, are you concerned at all that this organization might be perceived as targeting communities of color? This is a Yemeni-owned business. That's a Chinese-owned business. Does that concern you at all that you guys are potentially targeting communities of color? <clears throat> well, um, you know, uh, today we we were led into this ac action by activists from communities of color, such as myself. I'm an immigrant from India, and um, the, the people who uh, co-led this action with me are from Arab and Muslim communities themselves, some of who, who speak the same language. Uh, as, as the workers inside of here. So, you know, we're not here to target these workers. We're here to target a system which is pinned against animals. And uh, whether it's this place or a slaughter, slaughterhouse in any part of this country, the cruelty that's happening inside, the suffering and violence is the same. Are you worried about being accused of taking food from people? <clears throat> no, because these animals are not food. Like, along the lines of what he was asking, the sort of cultural aspect of what we're watching is a, a, a group of folks who come from another country. We live in an era where people from other countries are under siege already. And then this is part of the culture, isn't it? The way the food is prepared. It's prepared a certain way along cultural and religious lines. So are you attacking your way of life when it is a culture that is already under siege? Absolutely not, because we are. The activists who led this action are from these communities, are from the same places um, from, that the workers are from. And, you know, we fr strongly believe that our, our culture promotes um, compassion, not violence towards animals. So, you know, we, we, we simply want the workers to know that, you know, we're not here to, uh, to be against them. We're just here to help animals. And um, that is what our culture has taught, has taught us. Do you, have you got any response from the owner of the business? Um, I, I did not. Uh, I was not able to talk to them. This is their livelihood. Are you worried about taking their livelihood? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, we're concerned about the about the animals. Obviously, we're not here to target the workers. But you know, what happens inside of these places? No one, no one benefits when violence against animals is happening. There's blood on the floor. There's bloodshed. There's heavy, um, it, you know, there's weapons such as knives. So, um, you know, this is a place which is not good for the workers, the animals, and. Um, you know, this is not a place which is pleasant to be working inside of. So just to recap, you're not concerned about livelihoods, you're not concerned about cultural implications? We're absolutely, you know, we, uh, I'm from the same culture as some of the people who buy, buy uh, our customers here, some of the people who, um, you know, even operate this place, and the people who were um, leading this action with me are themselves from Muslim backgrounds, and, you know, they strongly believe that their, that their religion, that their community, that their culture doesn't promote violence against them. No, the Muslim community does actually, I mean, yes, lamb in particular is a very sacred animal in the culture. And the way it's prepared, and the way it's cared for, and the way it's handled, there's very strict rules about the way to do that. You know that as well. 
Well, what's happening to the lambs inside of this place is, is no different than what happens to cows, pigs, chickens, etc. Every slaughterhouse in the United States. In fact, what is, what's happening here is uh, in some ways better than what's happening inside of every other slaughterhouse in the United States. So, you know, for for, for me to say that there's uh, more cruelty happening here is absolutely false. Um, every place which uh, is violent towards animals um, is doing something wrong. Anything that I haven't asked that you want to mention? Uh, well, I just I did want to mention that 22 activists were arrested um, today, and you know, uh, they 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 we we were here inside to ask that the animals be relinquished to us, um, and you know we are we want to take them to the to the vet to give them the safety that they deserve, um, and we were not leaving until that happened. So 22 activists uh, were held inside of this place and ultimately arrested and cited. Were, were you cited as well? I was not. But you actually carry the, the lamb out. I did. I did carry the lamb out. Where is that lamb? Um, she's on her way to the vet. What did the workers say when you started taking the animals out? <clears throat> um, I did not have any conversations with the workers. You just um, walked in and took a lamb and no one said anything? No. Not to me. Uh, I know other other people might have uh, you know, might have had conversations with the workers. Um, I know one of my co-organizer, Marion Husbaba, um, from a Muslim family background herself, was talking to the workers and... Um, is she here? Uh, she is. Yeah, can we ask her? Miriam? Hi, Miriam, how are you? I'm good, Hi, how are my you? name is Sergio, I'm a reporter over at NBC. Nice to meet you. Joe, Hi, over Joe. at CBS. Nice to meet you. Nice. Uh, Miriam, tell us your name and how to spell it. My name is Mariam, M-A-R-Y-A-M, and I'm an activist with direct action everywhere. Mariam, what's your last name? Kamali, K-A-M-A-L-I. What city do you live in? Belmont, Belmont. California. So what we were asking was, uh, this is a this is a Yemeni-owned business, and there's some concerns about targeting communities of color in some of these demonstrations. Right. Uh, did you have a conversation with the owners and yes. about the cultural implications about physically taking property from them? Um, they suggested that we buy um, the animals and that's how we can take them out and so I reminded them that these chickens, bunnies and sheep, they're not property, they're not objects like chairs and tables that we can buy. They're individuals and they're sentient beings and that they have the right to live out their lives happy, safe and free, just like humans, just like cats and dogs in our homes. So, according to California law, they are property. Do you are you concerned at all about phys, about there actually being video of colleagues picking up animals and taking them out of of a store, much like going into Macy's and declaring <laughs> this stuff is not property? Um, I think it, when it comes to sentient beings, um, we need to update the laws to reflect um, that it's time to confront the issue of speciesism and that um, recognizing other animals as individuals that they are. Did you say speciesism? Yes, speciesism. What did the worker say to you as, you, as people were taking animals out? Um, he said, this is not the right thing to do. And I said, when you see someone uh, hurt and in stress, it's, it is our moral duty to step in and to help that individual, regardless of uh, the species. And by individual, you mean what? Uh, it could be a cat, it could be a dog, it could be a human, it could be a bird. Regardless, they are sentient beings. And though we come from different species, we're all the same in feeling pain, fear, terror, and um, and we also value our lives the pardon, same way. Pardon the direct question. Are, are you Muslim by chance? I was Muslim born. Yes. Okay. Are you are you are you worried at all about the implications of potentially targeting a Muslim business? Um, no, I'm, I am an Iranian American, and regardless of our backgrounds and our cultures, um, uh, we need to uh, confront injustice. And so it doesn't matter where we come from, who we are, when something is wrong, we have to make it right. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Uh, so, 
Priya and Miriam just gave like a really, really amazing interview, and I just wanted, you know, what they said, really accurate. We're not here to target the workers. It's not this business versus others. You know, any slaughterhouse, any business that's hurting animals, we want to go there, we want to bear witness, and we want to use, um, kind of like speak up for the animals that are there. So I hope that a lot of that information gets out on NBC News tonight. Um, an amazing work to Miriam and Priya. Um, who did such a great job explaining why we were here and why this action was led by people of color from the communities that were affected here. And just what they said, you know, it's not that it's the, the non-human animals are being so exploited here, but so are all of the workers who are here who have to work in these horrible places where rates of PTSD are much higher and rates of injury are much higher. And um, so we have the owner here. Um, you want to talk to the news? Okay, okay, great. Alright, so your name and how to spell it. My name is Tamimo. Spell that for me. T-A-M-I-M-A-L-G-H-A-Z-A-L-I. Okay. Uh, tell me how to pronounce it if I was going to say it slower so I can pronounce it later. Tamim. Just for Tamim. Tamim? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, and do you, own the, do you own the business? No, he's my cousin. He's your cousin? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, what, what, do you, what do you yeah. think happened? Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but like, uh, I, I, I don't think this is the way to come to... Uh, like, uh, if you want a good way, you go to a county because everything here is legal. You come here to make a bad picture for our business. And uh, I don't think this is the right way. Uh, let's see. Like, uh, some people posted on Facebook, our cousins, and they said your cousins, uh, some people atta attacking them. We have here a big community, and uh, I can show you on Facebook. They said, hey, okay, let's go there. If they are, if there's no police. If they're fighting our cousins, we will fight back. So do, you, do, you, do you feel attacked? Yeah, the, the Facebook, they said they attack, they go to inside. You know, when uh, like... Uh, Anyone uh, inspection come from from the from the city, they give a permission. Hey, we're coming to check. that's day to check. And right. when they come, they stay outside until we give them the permission to do everything. But the way they did, they came but attacking the this is this is not the good the way. How about the dead animals that are inside in the cages? The dead animals inside in the cages. If you wanna do if you wanna do the, the dead animal, don't attack this one, attack the restaurant. Attack the big market. But they, 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 they have dead they animals have dead, inside. They have dead animals also. The and even if we want to talk about dead animals, there is a religion. They talk about the we're cheese. equal opportunity. So if we go to the restaurants, they say go to the slaughterhouses. If they, we go to the slaughterhouses, they go say go to the grocery stores. If we go to the grocery stores, they say go to the restaurants. And the reality is we will go everywhere. And um, we will go um, wherever the animals are being abused, non-violently, respectfully, not to attack anybody, but just to get uh, the animal's message across. And I want to make very clear that we are not here to target the workers. We're not here to target the employees of this business. We are here to rescue the animals. We had extremely careful instruction to not touch any of the workers. Um, you know, they're just doing their jobs. We want them to be able to live in a world where they don't have to do those jobs. Nobody wants to do that job. Um, and I hope that they find um, other ways to support themselves. And I hope that our economy um, allows them to not have to work in these terrible jobs. And we're not here to attack them or anything like that. Um, and um, it's really hard to hear the reporter because of um, all this mob around the around the people. But I'm going to try to get get in here. Have a soul. He doesn't have a central nervous system. That's just not, yeah, it's not, I would say, I'm just like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just want to say this is like, this is so driven. Um, so this is, this is what they do. The same excuses all the time. All of a sudden, either, uh, they become plants, right? <laughs> 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 is it perfect that the animals are dead in the cages? Okay, don't, don't come to what someone do? who don't know nothing about the law. Go to the laws, uh, to the law uh, places. Go, go, go to the county, go to the, to the city. We can't do nothing. If here an animal's dead nothing. in the cage, you're saying here, that's perfect? Here, here, they give us the license, they give us the permit to do everything here. So if you want to talk to them, talk to them. Why they give us? 
because they know we are legal. Like okay, like some few people wanna at, wanna uh, wanna like uh, control a lot of people. There is a lot of people here than vegetarian, and this is in my religion. I can eat meat, and you guys know. So you be a hundred can uh, control a thousand. You said this is like something not in America. What do you mean by that? In America, I like to come to the store to attack the store and go. What is the police? What is the, what is the safety? What is the, what is the respect for everything? Like uh, okay, like uh, okay, this is a business. Next time they go to, to other business. Hey, why you sell uh, ice cream? In my religion, ice cream is, is no good. And attack and take the ice cream. What is this? No respect for us. No respect for our business. We don't know. This is hurt some people. We just know now, okay, go to, go to uh, uh, I told you, the law places, the city, the county, talk to them, not, not talk to us. You, you, you be the, uh, okay, you give a bad business, you get a bad picture for, for our business. Was anybody inside? Or no hurt, no hurt, but you know, like... Uh, Are any know, animals hurt inside? Huh? Are any animals hurt they inside? They killed inside, they yes, killed, that, not, not only exactly. are, they killed. Exactly. As I told you, you hear my feeling when you feel the trees, same thing. No, if, if there's thing. moral equivalency, then hey, you could also eat listen, humans. Listen, here... Then they're cannibalism. Okay. Listen, here, here, you're not going to find any answer. We kill, uh, you're not going to find any answer. You go there, find the answer. And believe me, believe me, I told you, this is well, this is bad things to do this thing. Because I told you, now I posted on Facebook. Some people want to come because they said you come here to fight. Okay. Imagine, I imagine hundred people. There's no violence in this side. Coming, uh, like hundreds, There's no killing hundreds, on this side. Hundreds of people, if they came, and they are hot. You are hot too. So, do you know how many the person was saying that, you know, he said no one was hurt um, in there and uh, someone asked him, what about the animals? Are the animals hurt? And yes, they were, but he clarified that no, no one of, on, you know, none of the workers or anyone was being hurt. People should go there and speak for the animals because they're not being challenged by the news media when I tried to challenge the business owner when he said it's un-American for you guys to come in and I said, well, there's animals there that are injured. Um, I was told to be quiet, that I was interrupting him. So, you know, it'd be very interesting to see what the end result of the news coverage is, whether it's given a balanced and fair hearing, because animals don't have a voice. Animals can't say, help, I'm stuck in here, I'm dying in cages. And the, uh, you know, he did point out, well, where's the county? Where is the county? If there are animals in cages, the trouble is that the government has looked the other way for so long. You know, when the Hallmark Slaughterhouse scandal happened, which was the largest meat recall in U.S. history, which it turns out many of the, much of the, the food was already fed to uh, school children and old people. But when they went in there and they did an undercover investigation, they saw those downed cows being dragged alive and hit with hoses and dragged with, um, you know, farm machinery. The USDA inspectors were there the whole time. They, they were there during all of the atrocities, and they didn't see a thing because the USDA is in bed with the meat and dairy industry. It practically runs it. So when this gentleman who's speaking for this facility points out, where's, well, don't come here, where's the county? The problem with that is that the government doesn't do its job. The government is not doing its job to ensure that that whatever happens inside a slaughterhouse happens with the minimum um, suffering to the animals possible. I don't think there's any way to kill an animal uh, that's humane because the animal doesn't have to die because none of us here at this visual eat animals. But the point is that the government doesn't do its job. I think Wayne is going to give an interview now. We're going to go see, um, see if we can catch it. We file complaints with Oakland Animal Services. When there's an animal cruelty complaint in the city of Oakland, it does not go to the police. And I talked to these wonderful officers here today about how I think that's a problem. If somebody's beating a dog to death on the street, it might take a week for an inspection to happen. Right? People you, want action now. You would, you would call animal control at that point, right? Yeah, and animal control oftentimes doesn't have the resources. They don't so have... We just heard the gentleman here say that. So we should have they, Prius they, speak they, on our behalf, they, actually. They feel, they feel Real, just cool. we've already talked to. There's a gentleman who just said, we didn't expect to see this sort of thing happen in America. That there are laws, there are processes, and for a lot of people to show up like that just 
Sure, sure, sure. How do you answer that? This is a. That's a great question. That's a great question. But coming from another country myself, and there are many folks from Asia, from from the Middle East, in our community, we know that in all cultures and creeds, violence against animals, cruelty to animals, is not acceptable. Right? This is not an American thing. This is not a Chinese thing. This is not a Sikh thing. This is not an Arab and Muslim thing. This is a universal right that all living creatures have, That's not right. to be thrown into garbage cans, not to be cannibalized, not to be drowning in your own blood. Specific, Every, you're talking about animals. And I'm talking about animals who are in this facility right behind us. And these workers themselves, they admit it's wrong. They said, yes, we don't like it either. And they're blaming their supplier. They're saying, go after our supplier because we get the animals in this condition. And if that's true, for sure, let's go after the supplier and let's get their help to do it. And I've convinced these guys to have a dinner with me and talk about the conditions these animals are being raised in and yes. try and create a better system where animals are no longer treated as commodities getting thrown away into garbage cans when they're still alive. What's your name? That is not right. My name's Wayne. Uh, uh, what's your last name? Sean. Spell that. H is in Henry, S is in Sam, I, U, N is in Nancy, G is in Gary. Uh, and what's what, your name? What city do you live in? I live in Berkeley. 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 What's your name? Seti Hill. Nice Seti Hill. Nice to meet you. Joe. 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 He's the co-founder of yeah, Direct I Action everywhere. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your reporting on this issue. All right. <clears throat> and you know Jane? Uh, Jane and I are members yeah. of the yeah. National Association yeah. of Hispanic <laughs> Journalists. Awesome. Jane's As incredible. Is Joe. Wait, who's Jane? Jane Velez. Yeah. Where's Jane? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Jane, you that was you. Long time yeah, to see. Yeah, you know, we have to speak up because the animals have no voice. Right. They can't stand. They can't say, "Hey, I'm stuck in a garbage can. That's not right. What did I do? I committed no crime." So we have to speak for them. That's yeah. the bottom line. And honestly, I had a lot of experience as a kid in Taiwan and Hong Kong and Asia where I saw conditions like this going completely unacknowledged in China as well. And it really influenced me. And I think, and, and the thing is, there are a ton of people in China, I'm from a Buddhist background myself, who are rising up in all these countries. So it's not just an American thing, it's a Chinese thing, it's so a Muslim here's, thing. Here's, here's the thing that I, I will say personally. Sure. Yeah. My brother's Muslim. Yeah. He has a shitty time right now. Yeah. Because lots of people. Yeah, are, and that's they don't terrible. Have their, exactly. That's wrong. That's so evil. this is a group of people who have come to a Muslim business yeah. and have put it on Facebook. Yeah. And that's the main concern that this guy has. Yeah. Now there are people on Facebook who are like, yeah, let's go get that business. Yeah. No one's going to do that in our group. Non-violence well, and no, love-based actors. I would imagine yeah. that this We're, group who is very well disciplined, raising yeah. their hands when asked if they've been arrested is likely not. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, yeah. We're living is, in a world today where right. Muslims are being targeted. And that's wrong. But the thing is, I mean, as an immigrant, I... I've had my face sliced open by white supremacists. I was hospitalized and had to get my face stitched back together by white supremacists who attacked me for night. As, as someone who's faced discrimination and violence myself, I know that it's all connected. And sure. the violence that's happening inside this slaughterhouse and, and is furthering you, the violence against them too. And, and can you, but, but the thing is, and, and he spoke a little bit to it. Yeah. He, he spoke to you know, worries about being targeted. Yeah, and more, of it course doesn't that's feel like America yeah. when people can come into your business yeah. and take things. Yeah, I know that feeling too because I had my house TP. I had you, people but, call me a chink over and over again. Have people beat the shit out of me because I was a Chinese kid in so Central I, Indiana. So one ask, of the things I realized. So I would ask, so yeah, I would yeah ask, please. Why would you then go into someone's business and take something? Because it's all connected. Because the violence that's happening to these animals is connected to the violence against the Muslim folks all over the country. We're seen as different, inferior, as exotic, and therefore not equal. Right? We want. Just, did you guys just add to that argument? No, I don't think we did because we've targeted big businesses like Smithfield. We've targeted McDonald's. We've targeted Costco. And we're here today to start a conversation to help animals. Not to target the business, but to help the animals. And that's it. And you recognize the reason why we're here is because it's a multiple business in part. Well, I hope that's not why we're here. And because it was also an Asian business sure. about a year ago. Yeah. But it's also a, an American business like Smithfield or, you know, a, a European business like, um, I don't even remember what that chain is, Tesco. You know that that activists all over the world are German. Right. You and know Sandy, the I know you interviewed Miriam, but like yeah. you know, we are definitely over here yeah. from the Muslim, Muslim faith. From from. Hello. Hello. How are you? So Life. there we go. There we go. Yeah. Getting a conversation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the business class a lot of money, and we have all the business license. Yeah. You know, and this is do you, you know do the health of market just came last. Do you mind if we talk to you? Can yeah. We, can we talk? You know, by the way, I don't want to say any word because I'm not the owners. I'm just next door. Wholesale, okay. and I heard what happened here, and just came because I know every week, week inspection comes from the health department to here. They almost, yeah, but you know they have a business license, they have employees, they have to pay, and you know this is. I like what you guys are saying. This is a bigger problem than 
with this guy. They are like owners, small business owners. They have to pay bills. They have employees like today. Like a lot of employees, they have to pay them. They have to pay rent. They have. If you guys have a problem, you can go to the health department, and we guys, we get with you. When the CDC stop or the county, everybody in this country under obey the law. We are legal. We're not hiding. We're not doing anything against the law. You know, I don't know so what's... And we respect everybody here. We're not against you guys or we say anything. But still, we have to speak the business license here. Can, I, have, make, can I make a suggestion? Do, do, wait, 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 wait. do you mind telling us your name really quick? so we can Sam. Sam? Yes. What's your last name? Kasi. Kasi. Uh, spell that. K-A-S-S-E-R. And you said that you actually are a business next door. Next door, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I sell t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> and do, and do, do, you know? Know, do you know them? Do you know the business? I know them very well, and I, I always come here, and they always inspection from the health department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, they never, they well, never have a violence or anything. They always... Well, violence occurs because all the animals die inside. Yeah, but... And, and let me ask a question, because there was a suggestion made that somehow coming here was anti-Muslim. Uh, I'd like you to speak to that, because you were here for DXE, for Direct Action Everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I'm an Iranian American and uh, injustice anywhere um, is, is not okay. It doesn't matter what our background is, uh, doesn't matter which country or what culture yes. or what tradition we practice. When we see injustice, when we see cruelty, it is our duty to step in and stop it. So um, hiding behind culture, religion, background um, is a way of, um, you know, uh, uh, justifying what we're doing is wrong. And going back to the laws, the laws are changing in, in, in the U.S. as we speak with the, the person we have in have the White they House. Yet? Um, they are, they've uh, posed the travel ban as where my family directly was related to, uh, was affected by the uh, travel ban laws. And um, so we do, know do that that's a like law and that's wrong. Honest, we don't want to take it like it's like uh, against minority people because I look, all these people look like. Yeah, my people not races or something. But honestly, this is small business guy. Yeah. Another thing, things like this, you're gonna close and you have to do another something. Why not you guys go to the big guys? Yeah, we do. Need to do it. We but do. this guy is the only thing, he's gonna go homeless. Yeah. You're not gonna do anything with this guy. Go to the big guys. And I'm the, we don't care what yeah, you are in America. We respect I mean, American law and just, we have a business license. We have a business license. We have everything. I didn't see any reason for you guys to argue. The one thing I'd suggest is, like, I, I really think these the guys are talking to us in good faith. And yeah, I've, honest, I I've already that. talked to Sam good. and Tim and the other folks yeah. about having a meal yeah. together and just sharing. I'd like to share about my cultural yeah. background yeah. because I grew up with slot houses like this in my neighborhood, you know? Like, and I and I understand where you're coming from. And Amin grew up in a, in a, in a similar community, yeah. you know, from the Muslim faith. So, you know, it's not against you at all. We want we want to have a conversation, that's all. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to having that conversation. That's I think okay. There's a lot of common ground for all of us to build on. That's why we see. First of all, I want to say as alaykum uh, I was raised Muslim for 18 years of my life. I thought eating halal meat was okay. But then I realized that eating animals is unnecessary. Right now, let me ask you right now. Allah says, Allah says. He's not here now. Another thing, eating animals, we should only do it. We're talking about business, about government, we are in America. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I create the rich and I create the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said,
every single little, every single penny for his open you know? And this guy, he has rent to pay. You know? You guys, you have to live. And plus, the police officer, they have a lot of problems. Yeah, for sure. People yes. die. People, we agree. If you keep them in like five cars now, for yes. what? Go do your homework if you believe in something. By papers, we are in America. But, sir, you're saying that it's not a story, essentially. What we're saying is animal well, agriculture is, is a leading cause of climate change. It's a leading cause of heart disease. It's a leading cause of cancer. And I know you're just flapping your fingers, but it's true. Heart disease uh, uh, kills uh, one out of I every four you, people. If you stop eating trees, you will stop eating meat. Well, then, How about why the don't, well, then But animal agriculture is responsible for deforestation. Also, also has a soul. But animal agriculture is human babies. Let's be human babies. Thank you, Mama. Can I say thank you? Thank you, sir, guys. I love you all. We love you, too. Thank you, go be here. Okay. So I think that um, Wayne and maybe a few other people who were involved in this action are actually going to sit down and have dinner with the people who run the slaughterhouse. Um, you know, and we want to make clear that this isn't about, you know, maybe one little instance of not following the law or about uh, halal or kosher or, or Whole Foods or Costco or whatever. This is about the basic issue that animals are not property. They're sentient beings. They are not property. And right now the law says they are property and we need to change that law. So we need to change the law that says that animals are property because we know that they're not. And women used to be property. People of color used to be property. Sexism and racism, racism are far from over, but at least we now, I now am not seen as property. And we can change that law for humans also. What was it like being interviewed, Priya? Um, it was great. Well, I mean, it was good, you know. Obviously, it's like a tense territory, but, you know, we are, we don't have anything to hide. You know, I'm accompanied by, I myself am an immigrant. Um, I'm, a, a, I'm, a, I'm here with Miriam, people like Amin, Samer, uh, Sanjeev. We're all from communities of color, and, you know, we're not here to target these workers. And, of course, you know, of, anytime you go inside of a business, people do feel threatened and afraid. And for that, we're sorry, truly. But we're here only for the animals. We're here only to say that, hey, what you believe in, what we believe in, is no violence towards animals, compassion for animals. And we all should believe in that because violence towards animals hurts everybody, including the workers inside, who are you know, forced to do these things that are so brutal. Who would want to be inside so much bloodshed? So it was a little, you know, obviously it was, it was um, challenging, but I'm glad that the issue is being covered. Yeah. So do you know what we're going to do next? I think we're um, probably going to be leave departing soon. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like you might be having dinner with some of the workers here and some of the owners. Yeah. The, some of the workers here um, did talk to Wayne and uh, they, you know, they want to sit down and, and talk to us. So, you know, they, they don't have any particularly negative feelings towards us and we have no negative feelings towards them. In fact, we want to help them um, stop hurting animals because... Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're looking forward to that vegan meal with them. Thank you. <laughs> so we're still here outside. We've been here now for over two hours. Um, and the news crews are departing. Um, I think we're, we're, we are kind of on the verge of leaving. Uh, we've left the flowers here like, for the animals um, to show our respects. Um, and you know, here it says animal liberation is the future. Um, we are all equal. Please save me. And we did. We did save. We did save um, three animals. We saved a baby lamb. We saved a small quail from a garbage can. And we saved a bunny. And they're all at the vet right now. Um, it says, we are here to bear witness to the suffering of the animals. And we love them. All of these are handwritten notes. Uh, I care about my babies, friends, and I care for myself. Just like you do. These animals do have families. Just like, just like we do. 
And over here, um, we have uh, justice is, is universal. Um, it's, it's never too late to do the right thing. It is time to end the violence. And for those of you on this call who aren't yet active, who maybe aren't yet um, vegans or aren't yet plugged into a community, um, it's never too late. Uh, join a community, take action for animals, uh, and uh, you know all oppression is connected. So many messages here um, for, for, the, for the animals. We believe in liberation for all humans and all non-humans. Um, and that's, that's right, we don't want the workers here to be exploited. We don't want the, the animals here to be exploited. We want everyone to, to be free, as this one says too. Liberation for all non-human and human animals. And uh, we're, we're just wrapping up here. Um, the slaughterhouse is, is closed now for the day, and hopefully soon it will be closed forever. And there will be no more slaughterhouses anywhere. Um, and um, we, we are really happy that we saved three animals today and we are mourning for all of the animals that we didn't save yet. Um, they're still in there. There's still a chance that Oakland Animal Services could come and help us out and take them out. So, so please, um, if you haven't made the call yet to Oakland Animal Services, call them, ask them to help us rescue all of these animals. And, um, and yes, yeah, someone just said on the live stream, suffering is suffering. That's right, suffering is suffering. When I feel pain, it is the same as when a non-human animal feels pain. Uh, and it's not better or worse or more or less important. So please um, speak up for the animals. Join a community, join a Save Movement chapter, join a DXC chapter, Anonymous for the Voiceless. And, and yeah, someone mentioned three is better than none. Like, you know, there are hundreds of animals in here and, and three might seem like a lot, but for the three animals that we saved, like that's the world to them. They, like, they were literally, like, one of these animals was in a trash can about to have their throat slit, and they were taken out, and they were brought to the vet, and they are going to go to a sanctuary. Like, for them, that's, that's the, a whole world uh, of difference, and those individuals matter. It's not just that the whole 10 billion matter. It's that every single one of them has a story, a family, feelings, and, and um, because of everyone on the live stream and because of everybody who was here taking action, uh, we, we were able to save them. It would not have been possible if there wasn't 200 people here on the street and thousands of people on, on the live stream here. So thank you so much, everyone who watched, because you literally did make, you, you made this possible. And uh, you made it possible for the media to come. You made it possible for us to take these animals out right in front of the police officer's eyes. You saw on live stream as Priya carried out a baby lamb, a quail, a rabbit. These animals are, are gonna live the lives that they deserve now. So thank you so much for everybody who is on the live stream. Um, I think we're gonna be signing off soon. Uh, my phone is probably going to die, but I wanna say once again, if you're not connected to the animal rights movement yet, please, it is not too late. Get connected, take nonviolent direct action for them and uh, speak up for them because you know together we really can change the world. We really can make things happen together. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of the crowd still. Yeah, we have Nathan was one of the activists who was arrested. Do you wanna say anything? Share any share any thoughts? Um you don't have to if you don't want to but. I don't know that I have too much to offer. I mean okay. A bunch of people did the same thing I did. We just went into slaughterhouse. We partook in civil disobedience. Um, hopefully, we catalyze something bigger. Uh, but aside from that, I think I'm inclined to say I did did just about what everyone else here did. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think you're right that we catalyzed something bigger. At one point, when the rescues were happening, there were over 1.2 thousand people who were watching on the live stream. And um, all those people were inspired to take action because of people like Nathan and um, all the other activists who were here. So thank you so much for, for doing that. So Priya and I are here. Um, we're going to say goodbye to everybody as she breaks my phone charger. Um, and we're going to say thank you again. Uh, Thank please, you please, if you haven't called, make the call, and also um, speak up for the animals, join the animal rights movement, and, and thank you for helping us save three Thank lives. you all. Goodbye, thank everybody. You all.